Welcome back, Red Spotters, the last show of 2020. I'm your host today, Alexis J. Soto, joined by Alexis Moreno, the Disney high priestess herself, David Moreno, who survived a car accident this year, and (laughs) Kyle Lira, who is currently eating some kind of, what, chocolate? It's a homemade Reese's cup. Okay. All right. Well. This is it for today, guys. Peter uh, died. Anyway, oh my this God. is the- <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Um, he's been gone for a month and a half. I'll explain that later. But uh, he he wanted to be here. He couldn't be here. Something of his died, but not him. He's very much alive and well. This is going to be episode died. 200. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. This is going to be episode, get this, 284 to close out to 2020. Hopefully, uh, this is going to drop New Year's Eve, uh, you know, the, the last day of 2020. And today we have no particular topics, no such news stories. We're basically basically here to commiserate and to swap war stories, as it were, <laughs> uh, for you our year in review. 2020, the fuck, goodbye. <laughs> Just wave it the hell away um, as we transition into uh, 2021, where what unspeakable horrors arrive, we don't know yet. And I guess maybe we can uh, predict uh, as to what will happen. So that's going to be our show for uh, today. And as a reminder, I'll say this at the beginning, at the end of the show, you can listen to our podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts, whether it be on Apple, Spotify, our home of castbox.fm, and also on YouTube, as well as the Fantasy Fair podcast, To the Table, and of course, Bon and Beyond with Kyle Lira. They never which, heard back. <laughs> and you heard it from him himself, so... By the, that, uh, by the way, I love the fact that the domain name for our home, castbox.fm, sounds like it's a freaking radio station. I just love that. I just love that little bit. Catch us now on castbox.fm. Oh my god. <laughs> I never heard of Gasbox.fm until we moved over to them. Um, and here's hoping that in 2021, we can stay with them from- without having to be, once again, uh, have the rug swept from under us, underneath us and then go to some other from place. From now on. Just be our permanent home. Just like... Yeah. Because I ain't paying for freaking <laughs> our own RSS fee. <laughs> Do you guys know how much like those cost? like to have like as much like information that we have it's like some go for like a hundred a month some go for like 300 a month and the way that this channel um other than our beloved youtube channel which this year we reached a thousand subscribers whoop whoop um (laughs) By the way, I'd like to thank one person and one person in particular for pushing us over that edge. Um, Sergio Ro- uh, Romo. Bro. <laughs> Not Romo. Sergio. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, will appreciate that. He actually messaged me because he listened to the last one. And he's like, I didn't get a thank you. <laughs> which was the last one, the one that Kyle and I did? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I mentioned him. Oh, I, I, I am pretty sure I name dropped <laughs> him. But in case it wasn't any clear, Sergio, uh, thank God for you. You were the official 1,000th subscriber to the channel. Yeah, so you you did it. You you did it here. So uh, Sergio Ramos, thank you very much for the for the. For... Did you call him Sergio Romo? Yeah, I call him Sergio <laughs> Romo. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that like God. a baseball player or something? Yeah, I, I, a I local ba- a, le- a local <laughs> legend, as it were. <laughs> okay. Uh, but Sergio Ramos, thank you very much for the for the subscription. We we love you. Um, ha- hope to have you on one day. Shit, why not? Um, so yeah. Uh, but other than that, like it, it, this year has been uh, quite something. 
Um, uh, some people have been excommunicated and recommunicated into the into the church of the House of Mouse. You know, <laughs> um, some some people have uh, have gone you know to to hell and back. Um, not much any names, David. Um, <laughs> Um, and then also we have, um, Alexis Soto over here, who's constantly on the verge of losing his insanity and being thrown into the loony bin. So, um, <laughs> and, which I mean, it, that's not exclusive to this year. I think we can see that for all of the other years. Um, but this year in particular, like you were doom scrolling yourself yeah. sick. You were doing all these things. Um, like, uh, yeah, uh, a few things here and there, but. We'll get over it. And me, well, um, well, shit. I don't. I. I honestly don't know. I'm going to therapy, which I guess is is good. I'm on pills. And no, I. We're we're gonna have a lot of time for all of us to really get a lot of stuff off our chest, which really is what we use this podcast for. Um, in all honesty, this is what this this show is about. But let's go ahead and start ground Continue. ground the conversation though with uh how all of you are doing and I want to know how you guys spent your Christmases. Mm, I mean I guess um I well I worked, so <laughs> <laughs> not Christmas Day, so I guess that was good. We all got the day off. Um but it was just us. Uh, I got home. We had dinner. Uh, we did like a gift exchange between the four of us. Um, and then we watched The Christmas Chronicles 2. <laughs> and then the next day, we ate the same thing. <laughs> and <laughs> Christmas I leftovers. In, yeah. <laughs> and we just like watched TV all day. Uh, at night, um... I worked at night. <laughs> yeah, he worked at night, and then I made my parents watch Wonder, Wo Wonder Woman with me, and we hated ourselves, <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> Full review coming in 2021 for Wonder Woman 1984. Hey, how about that? All right, that was your Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, so, David, you worked Christmas Day? Yeah, uh, I worked, well, technically at midnight, so I technically started the work, like, on the 26th. Okay. Which is, I don't know, for me, is like a <laughs> bullshit way to not pay me <laughs> for the holiday. <laughs> Only in America. <laughs> Isn't capitalism lovely? It's beautiful. And Kyle, you also worked on Christmas I Day. I worked Christmas Day, yeah. Um, good thing, like, but, like, our Christmas, it starts the 24th and it ends, um, somewhere in the 25th. Um, so I had plenty of Christmas before going into work, but I just, everybody just didn't want to fucking work. Also, because we were the only fucking, uh, place open, you could imagine how busy, um, the workplace must have been. Um... So that was that was something. Um on the plus side we got a we got a close early. Um so that was that was nice. Um got a lot of got a lot of cool things. I got a new baby. I got a new baby. Um my my new freshly uh out of the box uh, electric guitar came in. It's Pelham Blue. And it's beautiful. I've always wanted a guitar in that color. Um, and it is absolutely gorgeous. I plugged it into the amp and it sounds absolutely, it rings like a like freaking bell. It's gorgeous. Um, yeah. Uh, you, you, Alexis Soto, you got me a kick ass, kick -ass gift. Um, it, uh, you got me um, a candle from the Magic Candle Company and it smells like the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Like, not exactly like it, but pretty damn close. Like, and that my room smelled like Pirates of the Caribbean for like three hours. And it was pretty cool. Um, 
So yeah, I'm not burning it right now. Um, I don't know if you know this, um, everyone, but I re often record in candlelight. Um, and uh, I'm not burning it right now. I'm burning another candle, but um, to because I want to savor the um, the candle because it's because it's a good candle. Um, yeah, uh, I went I went and delivered my presents to my dad's house. Um, I had them open their gifts in front of me, and then they give me mine and all that stuff. And then I went I went back home. Um, of course, you know, socially distant, safe, whatever. Um, but then also I went back home. Uh, they did their thing over there. Uh, gift exchange Christmas morning. Christmas morning. Um, and so we got all that done and then work. That was my Christmas. I got a question. Uh, only because I know that you had told us about this particular gift. How did your mom react to seeing baby Yoda? Uh, like, okay. So she, cause she's been like wanting and like wailing all freaking year since she saw the child for the first time in the um, first episode of the Mandalorian. Unfortunately, last year, uh, there was no merch to be found, but boy, this year they they more than Lucasfilm and Disney made more than made up for that. Um, so there's a uh, their Grogu is available now for for the public, and uh, she's she's always been saying, you know, I want you know I want a baby Yoda, I want a baby Yoda, I want a baby Yoda. Um, so I was like, okay, I know what I'm gonna get, I know what I'm gonna do. So I purchased that some bitch <laughs> and I bought it and it came straight to my house, you know, and lo and behold, I opened it cause I want to see the baby and I opened it, saw it and I was like, she's going to love it. She opened it up Christmas morning and boom, she was like, ah, <laughs> That's great. That's the kind of reaction you want on a Christmas morning. Yeah, she's like, I finally got him! <laughs> <laughs> Which is nice, you know? Before we swing back around to me, uh, Moreno's, uh, you want have any uh, cool stuff you want to uh, tell the audience what you got for Christmas? Uh, Moreno got me a statue of Majora's Mask from a Legend of Zelda game. <laughs> That's pretty a damn statue. cool. It's like the actual mask, Majora. Uh, yeah, it's just hanging on my wall. It's cool. <laughs> I was supposed to get him uh, the Lord of the Rings steel books, but I said nah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so did I. Um, in, <laughs> in a different way. <laughs> Um, I I just got money because I'm saving up for a laptop. Oh, and, good. Yeah, good. and so I like because we have someone like, else should have too, <laughs> but he didn't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I and then <laughs> and then Kyle got me the MU hat, which I do have on display. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then I got socks. Oh my god, I got a whole bunch of like Starbucks gift cards this year. Do you even go to Starbucks? Yeah, I already use them all. <laughs> okay, uh, that answers but, that question. <laughs> yeah, but like, I don't really get like coffee, like, I get like the sandwiches and like hot chocolate. <laughs> um, I mean. The hot chocolate's amazing. Yeah. Um, and, like, I got a bunch of fuzzy socks, which I love. We've reached that level of adulting where receiving socks is, like, the, best, the best, right? the best ever. Yeah. It's, it's weird because most of the gifts uh, I got this year comprised of a uh, new wardrobe, which I, I sorely needed. Um... In the form of... Since I met you, because you've been wearing the yeah, same well, Captain Marvel shirt and Star Wars shirt. Yeah. 
No, literally. No, but th- there's actually a whole bunch of those Star Wars and Marvel shirts that I just never even wore. Like, I, I went into my closet and I realized I've had this for like years and I never wore this. Why? It was always like the same rotation of stuff. But I got like a track suit. Uh, an Adidas tracksuit by one of my, uh, which Kyle apparently I, said that it looked like a Russian mob boss or yeah. some shit like that. <laughs> you look like you're about okay. to. You look like you're about to make a deal. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it because I've always wanted to have one of those, but I never really would fit into one. So now I do. Um, I got a bunch you need of. You're be munching uh, on a cigar while you're. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> No, I don't smoke. With the Rolex. Uh, <laughs> I got a bunch of uh, uh, hoodies, sweaters, jackets, and um, windbreakers. So a bunch of new stuff because uh, the windbreaker that I had was like five years old already. It's like, damn. Yeah, I don't really update my wardrobe all that often, but damn, I got some great stuff this year. Um, and yeah, most uh, I'll, I'll get back to the gifts in a minute. But yeah, most of my Christmas Day was actually kind of one of the best I've ever had. It was really lovely. I was spending all day with the family, uh, opening presents. Uh, I had uh, you know Christmas breakfast was beautiful. It was menudo. If you're a Mexican household, you know what that is. It's mm-hmm. delicious. I, I mean, if you happen to like that. Um, tamales, of course, uh, especially the cheese kind. Uh, are the ones that I had. And honestly, it was so relaxing. It was really kind of a special day. And it kind of just, you know, uh, spent the whole day just watching Christmas movies. Uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, both Home Alone and Home Alone 2, even The Holiday. Remember that movie with Cameron Diaz, Jack Black, and um, what's his name? Jude Law and Kate Winslet. So that's who bought it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that movie. Okay. Sue me. Guilty pleasure. Um, and it also apparently is a Christmas movie. I forgot. That it was a, it's a rom-com, it's but it also happens to take place. The, the holiday. holiday. I know. It's been <laughs> years since I've seen it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So, yeah, I was really getting in, in the, you know, in the holiday spirit of it all. And then as far as the gifts. All right. So the real nice stuff. First of all, uh, since we talked about what we got each other. Uh, Kyle got me uh, and he think he was here. He saw me open the present and I was just like laughing out loud because it was hilarious. And it also was something I had actually been looking to get for myself for a year, but never actually bothered to. So it's the mug from uh, Knives Out, (laughs) which says my house, my rules, my coffee. So thank you very much. Uh, I love this. I, I, It'll be like when I'm not using it, it'll be on display. I'll bet you that. Yeah, you, know, uh, you know what you need to do? You need to be over a balcony overlooking the throng bees. <laughs> you need the credit with a blanket you know. and everything. With the, the Rolling Stones playing off in the background. I think that'll be perfect. Yeah. Oh, by the way, yeah. have I mentioned to you guys about my uh, donut hole theory? Yes. Anyway. <laughs> uh,. <laughs> <laughs> okay sure go listen to our knives out audio commentary if you want to hear kyle's donut hole theory we did that this year for a reason that way you can go over there and listen to it not you know, let it eat up time here in it's santa uh, <laughs> also i did uh provide gifts for a lot of people uh the moreno is unfortunately um we're not here as well they didn't really commit to the date but i was hoping that they would be here on this time for new year's eve but since our plans were canceled uh i've made arrangements for you guys to receive your gifts fairly soon oh my so, god <laughs> yeah david uh is on the lookout for that so i really hope you enjoy it oh um <laughs> yeah gifts are always fun let's be real it's just it really is it's it's so much fun opening um all this stuff i i actually got a new chair uh i don't know if you you, i posted on my instagram but it's one of those gaming chairs so if you see like from behind me has like uh it's taller and with back support and the pillow so it's it's really nice i can't and it's actually better i can't wait to see you stream among us on twitch (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, maybe, who knows? Maybe 2021 will be the year Red Spotlight goes to Twitch. Um, <laughs> That'd be interesting. That would be interesting. We need to get some camera setups for that, but we've otherwise we've got the audio uh, handled for the most part. But do we have the but bandwidth though? <laughs> no, I don't think we have that quite yet. But um, you know, we're taking baby steps. Hey, we just toward, got a thousand toward that. subscribers. <laughs> yeah, that's so great. Two thousand, and yeah. we'll do video <laughs> in five years. <laughs> in five years, <laughs> literally in five years. Um, Funny you should say so, that, though. Let's wind the clocks back a little bit, shall we? 2013, 2014, we, on our first iteration, what was what would eventually become Red Spot Entertainment was a little project called the Barely News Crew, where um, a few high school constituents uh, got together, didn't know what they were doing, knew jack shit one thought he knew um what he was doing um but it turns out that his uh audio mixing skills was just raising the volume a little bit i'm not naming any names <laughs> um one person um just like the whole it was a whole mess but the original iteration of this was video and so if you want to find oh, that's right if you want to find it somewhere on the dark web, because um, <laughs> that's where it is right now, uh, you could go find it. We're all there. They're fun. They're fun stuff. They're also hilarious. You got a chance to laugh at us, and and you get to see how cool some of us thought we were, but we really weren't. Um, hilariously enough, I I still have those videos public. I don't know what that is. Maybe it'll, there'll come a time where I'll take those things off. But they're there if you want to. See them for right now. The later, the, the 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 last ones were actually pretty decent. Yeah, but the, the early ones. Are pretty one, good. You, know, you guys are yeah. gaining some traction there. Yeah, as far as quality is concerned. So, like, uh, that's what I really hang my head on is that that last year, um, we did the best job we actually we we possibly could mm -hmm. uh, at that point. But like, and the growth, right? We say growth a lot, uh, was tremendous. <laughs> you know, with everything. Um, but yeah, I also got some, I, I said this, I don't know how many times, but in the course of getting gifts for all of you guys and, you know, family, I ended up getting things for myself because <laughs> that always happens. Same, so, <laughs> so I got myself some new frames for my posters. Um, like the, the top ones that I have behind me, uh, the large 24 by 36, I got some new frames for those because, um because I wanted to. Um, it was as simple as that. Um, and so that was fun. Uh, and other stuff, which uh, I've yet to unveil yet. So like, I always find it hilarious how my room is just jam packed. And yet I always find new ways to just move things around. Um, and it's always a bitch. I also, uh, so the stuff I got Peter and I'll get to in a bit why he isn't here, but um, I got him a poster of Dune, which is, Going to be coming out next year, which I also posted on Instagram. I feel like we all got um, Peter Dune stuff. <laughs> you got him Dune stuff? Uh, I assure Or you don't want to say yet. Oh, okay. 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 I got gotcha. you. <laughs> uh, well, I got him a poster of Dune. It was a, a stylized poster. It wasn't like the official, if there is one yet, a theatrical poster, but uh, it came out really nice. I even got it framed. That way he had no fucking excuse not to put it up on his wall because my pet peeve with him is that he has so many fucking posters in his like collection in his like rat's nest of a room. Honestly, if you've been in there, it's like it's literally like a pile of crap and he never puts any of it up. Anyway, um, he told me there was a 69 slash nice percent chance of that going on the wall. So <laughs> Alexis Soto. I am proud. <laughs> no, no, but but I, I, I literally... Okay, you, you know what I meant. But I even bought him the damn, like, these these strips that you <laughs> that you put on the wall. I literally provided him everything he needed to put it on the wall. And he's still, like, only a 69 slash nice percent chance of it going on the wall. So it's like... I don't know what else I could have done other, you know, just, you know, short of me physically sneaking into his house and putting it on the fucking wall, which I, I might right do now. at some point. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Honestly. You know what? Let's take this pod. No, we're going to stop what we're doing. We're going to take this podcast on the road. All right. Moreno's four or five hours, give or take. Right. It'll be 2 a.m. It'll be 2 or 3 a.m. Give or take. By the time that rolls around, he'll already be asleep. All right. We'll Alexis s- will be awake. Huh? I'm always awake. Yeah, Alexis will be <laughs> Alexis will be awake until freaking nine a.m. in the morning. Um, so he'll be awake. I've actually been sleeping earlier these nights. I've you know I've gone to bed at three a.m. That's a win for me. <laughs> wow, what a fucking accomplishment! But um, no. So what we'll do is take the podcast on the road. We'll sneak into Peter's room while he's a little sleepy, sleepy, and then we'll we'll. Uh, dash in the night like the Grinch and just slap it up on the wall for him and then when he wakes up he'll be like oh my god why was this you know on the wall and then he'll be and then it'll, it'll be like the you know gift that keeps on giving you know it'll be like ooh who put it up on the wall it's like a little bit of a mystery too like who put it up on the wall Christmas elves it was the elf on the shelf or maybe it was the expired uh, Disney Infinity figures that woke up in the night and did that stuff. I mean, who knows? Who knows, really? You know he might be listening to this. Right? <laughs> Peter? Listening to back to the program? No. No. Peter? Nah. Nah. That, that seems a bit too far-fetched. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> on that level. Um, just a bit. Just a tad. But overall, it's it's been a great Christmas. Uh, the only thing I was a little PO'd about was um, some of my parents' gifts arriving like after Christmas because there was a, a backlog of certain things. But they got it. Uh, they loved it. And um, yeah, uh, it's a great holiday so far. It's, a, it's been a, a really nice couple of days. And um, yeah, I hope. All of us, it seems like we all had a really good Christmas. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, I mean, I don't know. It's nice to just, like, be the four of us, like, after everything that's happened. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, this, is it this time? No, like, almost this time last year, we almost didn't get it. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's been a year. Uh, before we get into that situation and, and you know recapping our twenty twenties, I do want to say uh, to what I've you know I've been teasing about the entire hour, and that has been uh, where in the hell is Peter Martinez? We've been talking about him a lot. Where has he been? He hasn't been on a podcast since the last episode that we recapped the Good Place with me and David, which you can go listen to because that's. A uh, wonderful podcast and also a great television show. So go watch that on Netflix, all four seasons. Um, it was a roller coaster of things. First, his room was used as a dumping ground because his dad decided to renovate the house. So that took around two and a half weeks of stuff. And then, um, and he has informed me that it is okay to publicly disclose this in case, uh, any of you might be wondering, but he was the first of us and hopefully the last, but who the fuck knows to come down with COVID-19, uh, which was unfortunate because, uh, he contracted it through work, which was in many ways unavoidable. Um, and we've seen photos of him sharing how he was completely like in, in like double masks, face shield, like almost in a hazmat suit, um, and he still was, uh, you know, contracted COVID. And I am, however, pleased to say that uh, it's by all appearances, he seems to have made a full recovery. Uh, I think he's passed the 10th day, uh, which is a critical day for COVID patients. And, and he seems to be on the up and up. And so we're all very happy to hear that. 
uh, and and due to that, he was scheduled to be on this show. However, um, <laughs> the final, I think the straw that broke the camel's back, as it were, for 2000, if, if, you know, if it wasn't bad enough that he got COVID, his computer <laughs> literally died, um, meaning he couldn't, you know, be on this call with us. He couldn't even record, and he's uh, somewhere out there right now trying to find a replacement so we can resume our um production in 2021 as soon as possible so he really tried i'm telling you he (laughs) tried to be back week in and week out but it just wasn't in the cards um as it were but um i guess peter's okay i mean he's alive and it's you know it's the end of the month and so i think um you know we knock on wood he he continues to make a full recovery but uh, I know that when we heard the news, it was, uh, uh, yeah, it was, it, I mean, it, it continues to hit closer to home, this pandemic. And I know that in the days following that, uh, I, we were told of other uh, friends of friends that were also, you know, tested positive. <sighs> so, yeah, that's where, uh, that's where Peter has been. And we hope to see him again in 2021. This has been, the, I think, the longest stretch where he hasn't been on the show. Um, so, but I'm very thankful that all of you are here and we can get to close out 2020 together in however way we can <laughs> because subsequently, uh, part of the collateral damage, as it were, of the COVID diagnosis was our bonfire was kaput, uh, down for the count, um, ultimately. I feel like this year is very sim symbolic of the ending scene from toy story 3 when we were all heading down the furnace until the aliens come and pick us up and that's like 2021 uh <laughs> it's putting too much hope in 2021 bro <laughs> um but yeah i mean realistically speaking i mean this shit isn't gonna go away i mean it's it's not gonna just be January 1st, 2021, poof, it's all gone. Like, this shit is still going to be lingering in, and people are going to be like, oh, it's 2021. That means magically this whole thing is going to be gone and all that stuff. And no, in fact, you know, people are only going to get worse from here. And yeah, I'm, I, I, as you could tell from my voice and the way that I'm, Speaking, I'm pretty much done with humanity at this point, so. <laughs> Yay. Oh, um, man, just if you want to add in, like, there's so many crazy stories. Uh, I think I have a I have a folder full of, like. Oh, I bet you do. Like, just stories and, and photos of the year that, you know, just like to, just to make sure that we don't forget, like, you know, some stuff, like, just in the last hour, I read, like, some idiot who worked at a health place threw away vials of the vaccine just because um and that's kind of where what we've been operating at but i will say though like the the hope was and that's why people have been saying this the hope was that by this point this would have been behind us to an extent to as much of an extent as possible Mm -hmm. but what i think all of us failed to calculate in the beginning was oh we live in this country which (laughs) In my view, as somebody who has identified as quote unquote a patriot and you know somebody who is politically engaged um is uh probably the worst country at handling this coronavirus yes that might even yes. be like too unfair to just say probably it definitely is um in just about every way possible. Like our leaders right now are fighting about whether or not to give us six hundred dollars or two thousand dollars. That's where we are right now. After like eight months. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, though, um, the vaccines are going to be coming out um soon. Uh, we're going to be getting it around March. Hopefully, maybe April. And so the good news is hope is on the way. And I think that's what we can hope for at this point. Just hope for hope. Yeah. Uh, after this year and everything. <laughs> you know? 
Yeah, I. We, I think. Uh, I go keep, ahead, Alexis. I keep hearing that they want to do another lockdown. In Arizona. Everywhere. Well, I think we'll, if we're you know heading down <laughs> the horizon of 2021. Um, what we can tell you is the same story. I know in this year and the podcast, we did weekly updates about COVID and how the situation was getting worse and worse, right? We talked about how in almost every single holiday, people ignored guidelines, they did family gatherings, they flew across the country, and every single time the situation resulted in more COVID cases. The same happened with Thanksgiving, and the same happened with Christmas Day, because from the travel numbers that have been reported, more people flew on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, then in the entire year, breaking records in the middle of a global pandemic. And so we are we, we know what that's gonna get us. California, the state that I reside in and many of us reside in, is currently in somewhat of a stay at home order, but there have been rumblings of the incoming administration, Joe Biden's administration, of pursuing more extreme measures because uh President Trump never really did a national, I think, lockdown mm-hmm. um, or a national mask mandate. That never happened. So there have been rumblings about that happening. Um, it's a crucial time because the vaccine is slowly being distributed and there are priorities. There are groups who are going to get it before others. We should say, for the record, because um, I've been seeing too much of this out there. There is no reason to not trust this vaccine. Get the vaccine. For God's sakes, get the vaccine. I don't want to hear any of this bullshit. I'm not going to even entertain it. And if you're not going to get the vaccine, fuck you. It's as easy as that to say. I don't give a fuck anymore about that. We've spent too much of our lives uh, just trapped inside because of your, as Peter would say, tomfoolery. (laughs) <laughs> um and yeah he has said that go check the the tape on that but um but the virus isn't going away and uh you know this is anecdotally but there's actually been recent studies that have come out of the CDC that have said that really the virus spreads much faster in smaller intimate settings like a family gathering than it does at a grocery store like Aldi's or Food for Less or Whole Foods. Um, And that is kind of the reason why we've, there were a lot of small intimate family gatherings that I was, that I usually am a part of in Christmas time, but we, we just didn't do it because it, it just didn't seem safe and we're not comfortable. Yeah, it just isn't it isn't smart. And as much as we want to come together and celebrate, you know, the end of the year. um, We just don't feel comfortable doing that, but it is a crucial time. The vaccines are beginning to roll out. Meanwhile, Corona seems to have there's like this new variant out there, which signs currently show is no more dangerous than regular Rona. It just means that it's easier to catch. Um, than the other ones. And so it's going to be a tricky timetable, but with the, and we have two strong vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna, uh, are both over 90%, 95 now percent effective at, uh, you know, preventing infection of COVID-19 mask wearing is still going to be a big thing all throughout the year. You need both. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's that I think you should feel the most at safe and protected is with the vaccine and with the mask. Um, and I know Alexis and, and David, you have, I think can speak more to this because you, uh, both of you, uh, spend day to day, uh, in public areas because of work. And I'm sure I think one more than the other has had their fair share of, uh, confrontations uh over the issue of masks and that may be one of you know the things to remember most of this year is the fact that that was made political yes and uh it's resulted in uh stupid conversations and 
blah, 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 blah. I mean, honestly, it's like, we should have seen this coming. All of the things that we know now, in honesty, we should have seen it coming. But like, that one did take us for a spin, right? Like, all of us in our everyday lives have had, um, well, I haven't personally have had, but I've seen um, altercations all over social media over <laughs> wearing a mask. Yeah. I uh, I think yesterday I just saw a video of this girl just like it was somebody was recording and it was the girl, the manager, and then the guest. I think it was at a restaurant. And she literally walked out and she was just like, I can't take this. Like, I'm quitting because of you guys, because of people like you that don't want to follow the rules. I'm just doing my job and you want to act this way. And she walks out and all of a sudden she like the the guests they felt guilty and she pulls out a damn mask from her pocket and is like fine I'll wear it I'll wear it after the girl had just like walked out like what the fuck like what 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 is the reason like <laughs> what kind of fucking entitled assholes you know you have to be in order to like not wear a piece of cloth around your face like it is it is it that fucking difficult i don't is it because like these people have never been told no before in their lives is it is it because but like the thing is that they're not being told no the thing they're just being told wear a damn mask to protect yourself to protect others to protect your family like they're not being told no and I'm pretty sure other people who have come into this situation where people don't want to wear masks, they give them other options. They don't say, no, you can't come in. They say, you wear this, you wear this, or you wear this, and then you can come inside. It's not that they're being told no. It's just that they feel so entitled to not be doing something to take care of themselves. Like, And that's the thing that like bothers me the most. Like, Why wouldn't you want to protect yourself or others even if you think that this is fake there's still that slight i mean obviously we know that it's not fake but like in your head do you not think that there is a slight possibility that you know that this might be real and in that case why wouldn't you do something to protect your fucking family like that doesn't make any sense to me ignorance isn't ignorance lovely we close out the year with the uh, last I checked right now. It says the total number dead of COVID-19 in the United States alone is 341,000. It's it, it's gotten so beyond parody that everyone is saying that every day we're losing a 9-11's worth of lives you know, due to COVID-19. ICU capacity is at zero. I don't know what more people need to see short of the collapse of society itself. Honestly. But that's been kind of what has shaped a lot of our feelings this year in terms of people. It's like, I think a lot of us had been very skeptical and very um, nihilistic, pessimistic about, you know, the general public in terms of um, being responsible. Man, that plummeted entirely in 2020. Um, there was like maybe one moment, one moment maybe in the year where it felt like humanity actually made a good decision for a change, and that was the election result, but barely. Um, and that was that. Oh, and that happened this year too. Trump lost the election, so uh, that can, we can we can put the, that in the good in the good news column, the right? The only <laughs> silver lining of the whole thing at that. Um, but yeah, I see what you you know you guys you know talk about i know like the the troubles because like there are some 
anti-maskers that come to my work and they're you know and it just it sucks the the lack of capacity to care in this country that i think it needs to be changed and the thing is is that it seems to be like the only country that's reported of like this kind of behavior is america like everywhere else like everybody seems to be you know the uk you know france you know spain italy they you know they you know japan and all that stuff and everybody seems to be complying with you know the mask regulations and just uh, taking the shit seriously what is it about american uh, i i ask all you guys what do you think it is about the american mentality that is so damn ignorant and reluctant to follow simple rules We, I feel like we genuinely don't know because, I mean, this whole notion of, like, freedom and, like, you know, having my rights and stuff, like, okay, like, nobody's taking that away from you, bro, like, (laughs) it's just so stupid. The whole, like, wearing the mask thing is in a in a way a life right in itself because you're allowing other people around you to live you know and and by that exchange like you know people wear their mask to help you live you know and i don't understand like how that is you know a life or death situation you know in in terms of you know liberty and and you know american freedom and like that shit does not like click to me Uh, the only thing i see is that uh that a lot of people are just freaking selfish as fuck and don't give a shit about this whole corona thing even though like they could be dying of it and they'll be like no i don't want to wear a mask you know they could be like that and it it freaking it, it sucks ass it really does because like with that kind of behavior and with all the ign- with all the ignorance that is going on, and I was telling Alexis this when I delivered his his uh, his present to him, is that I it, it was that number one with Joe Biden being president, no Republican is going to be able to listen to him because he's a Democrat. Just by sheer, just that by that sheer. Uh, fact that he is a Democrat that people are the Republicans are not going to listen to him so this thing will spiral even further down the whole anti-mask notion because um, and also like today Joe Biden announced you know on on Instagram and all his social medias that um, that the first 100 days of him being in office he's going to enlist a 100 it's not even mandatory like a 100 day um uh ma- mandatory mask wearing um uh thing going on and i could guarantee you a lot of people are not going to listen to him namely republicans because he's a democrat they're not going to listen to jack shit why do you think people burned effigies with freaking uh barack obama's face on it you know because he was somebody of the opposite party he stands for at least some semblance of progressive ideas people are not going to listen to that um number two um this uh new year's day i'm very scared for tomorrow and uh the next day because you know new year's is the big party celebration and this number i think is gonna double and by the way that we're going and the way that people oh by the way with the vaccine i think that people are going to look at the vaccine and say i'm immune i can't get the coronavirus anymore they think that there's some sort of magical pill that they that they swallow and boom all their problems are gone and they're going to treat it as that and a lot of companies are going to market it like that they'll be like hey you're you know the vaccine is out we're back to normal and honestly I don't see us, you know, this is maybe the pessimist in me, but I don't see this shit ending until at least 2030. Like until everything is completely gone. We're not looking until 2030 until everything is back to normal. 
I think the answer to your original question um, about what's wrong with America resides in uh, deeply philosophical and political conversations of which I don't really don't want to get into. Uh, the short term answer is right wing uh, radicalization of the country. And um, it's pretty much as simple as that. A lack of education, a lack of resources and public goods, which has been the story of America for quite some time which, you know, we can't get past until we get rid of the conservatives and the neoliberals uh, in this country. They control all the power, and look where we are right now. Uh, there's only one senator right now that's fighting for the people out of 100. So that's kind of where the situation is right now in America. Um, in regards to... Um, all of what you said, uh, Kyle, is entirely likely to occur um i will ha put more faith in the efficiency of the vaccines um but no matter what happens there won't be much uh control over the same people that have already um been behaving and acting the way that they have been and I think the most unfortunate thing about all of this is that it's the people who are completely innocent that die that makes me feel the worst. The ones that wear masks and get the virus and die when they did everything right. That's the part that is damn near unforgivable. Um... Where the, when there'll ever come a time where we can overcome this, I think we'll have to wait until we're in our forties for our generation to fully take over. Um, because honestly, it just seems like you read the news every single day, and this was true in all the other years, to be fair, but more so this year than any other year. You read the news every day, and you think to yourself, "Man, our country is just run by idiots." And party affiliation doesn't really much matter these days uh, for the people in power, mm -hmm. uh, really, ultimately. Until we can change that, then there won't be much of a fight left to do. And that's kind of where we are in 2021. Uh, we can only really hope for the best. And we can hope um, that the, the vaccines are as effective as they are. And at the very least, it'll be a. we can hope that it can be a better year than 2020 was. Uh, in the sense that, I don't know, maybe pray for a miracle um, is all we can do at this point. And maybe we can put some more faith in the fact that uh, at the very least, the leadership in the country is completely changing uh, from the executive branch and that there'll be more widespread information and that they won't um, do a lot of the despicable, disgusting and downright evil things that this administration did. Uh, from stopping masks from being sent to every household to like pressuring the CDC to release false information to pressuring schools to reopen unless uh, they lose their funding. All of that uh, from suggesting that... Oh my god, that... we're finally getting rid of her! Oh yeah, Betsy oh DeVos god. is gone. Uh, we can celebrate that. So there can be some good things to expect um, in 2021, as there were some few things in, in 2020. Um, I wish with all my being, I wish I could be as, um, optimistic as you. Did I sound optimistic? I don't know. <laughs> I think that was a bit downbeat. I, I usually, I am much more optimistic, but I think, uh, I, I think I'm just being as realistic as I can be. I, I, I believe in the vaccines. I don't believe in people. And we're going to see in real time how that's going to play out. So that's where we are with the virus. Now let's shift to the year with what we discuss primarily in this podcast. However, it's been quite sparse. The year in movies, which unfortunately I don't think the tone is going to be much more upbeat than it was with the virus. Um... Anything to say uh, as a whole, this black hole of a year in movies? Oh my God. Let me talk to you about, um, about no time to die because that was, that was a, such a good movie um, that, that, you know, honestly a great fitting end for Daniel Craig's run as James Bond. 
but the thing, you know, uh, you know, and it, and it's sad to see him go. No, I'm just kidding. That movie never fucking happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, it almost did. Uh, we saw we uh, Soul came out. Soul came out. Um, I hear that TV is really good this this time around, like this season of of The Crown. Um, I'm still barely. So that's your answer to how movies was is I hear TV is really good. Uh, I think that's kind of all we need to hear. Moreno's, um, any, any, what do you, what do you make of this year? Um, or lack of year, honestly, in movies, um, any stand out to you? Is there anything good this year? Um, TV was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I thought Soul was pretty good. Um, honestly, like I can't. I feel like this year has felt like ten years, and I can't even remember like things that came out. <laughs> um, Birds of Prey, Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Bad Boys for Life, uh, Scoob. All oh, I like oh, I trolls. Um, Mulan, Wonder Woman, nineteen eighty four. You know, I completely forgot that Mulan existed. <laughs> um, The Invisible Man was great. I think we oh can yeah, all agree that there. That was really good. He, that might be my favorite one. I was I disappointed in him because you know, I, mean, I in the Invisible Man, I could see him. Yeah, but, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with the. I got my man. I got my top ten right here. I'll tell you guys. <laughs> wow. I, I mean, I've seen two. Uh, wait. Nineteen movies. Uh, I still need to watch. What is it? Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Uh, The Sound of Metal, and uh, what's it called? Midnight Sky. Mm. I think that just came out on Netflix. I'm just curious about it. <laughs> but uh, did you perchance yeah. see the movie Nomadland? Nomad. I don't know if it's available anywhere to see that yet. Okay. There's a lot of movies as they are usually are this time of year that we want to see, but they're just not available, you know, for regular people like us to see. So we're waiting on that as well. Mm. Um. But go ahead, David. You had some movies you wanted to mention. Oh, Enola yeah. Holmes. That was. Oh, did you guys watch that one? Enola Holmes. No. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, I hear yeah. it was good. So uh, yesterday I, I saw a documentary, uh, The Bee Gees. How can you mend a broken heart? Oh, oh. how was that? It was really good. Like, uh, I know their music and all that. I wouldn't say I'm a big fan, but I saw it with my dad, who is like. A big Bee Gees huge. fan. Oh my god, he's a huge Bee Gees Incredibly fan. Incredibly huge, oh my gosh. He cried like, I don't know, three times during the movie. It just... I didn't know that was a thing. I need to write that down. I, need... I want to see that. Is yeah, one of his was... favorite, is one, okay, is one of your favorite, is one of his uh, favorite movies, uh, uh, Saturday Night Fever? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the only movies we owned growing up, which <laughs> we were not allowed to, to watch, so it was pointless. <laughs> Yeah, no, I remember, I mean, growing up, we've always had that, like, giant box TV that would, like, go static every once in a while. We had to hit it just to, like, make it stop and all. Like, we had an old one. <laughs> and then when we finally bought a flat screen, you know, that was one of the first movies my dad put on. It's like, we got to see this and this screen right here. And we saw. So, like, yeah, he's a huge fan of it. <laughs> man. Stay there. Yeah. Stay there. <laughs> Where? Where is the documentary available at? HBO Max. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. I know what I'm watching tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. I feel like you you would really like it, Alexis. I love documentaries. Mm -hmm. I, I think mm -hmm. I'm the only one that ever makes like a space every year on my top 10 list for a documentary. So like, uh, and Bee Gees, I mean, come on. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Maybe I can watch something on there that's good on HBO Max. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I saw The Old Guard came out on Netflix. On Netflix. Yeah, that one. It was cool. The action was pretty nice. Uh, I mean, it's just a 
cool story. Bunch of immortals can't die, but then when someone new in the group came in, like you know, you get that little world building stuff, and then some like rich dude finds out about their secret and tries to experiment on them. Yeah, this one, <laughs> the babysitter, killer queen. So I think it was last last year. This is the sequel. Last year was just the babysitter, and it's about this girl, the babysitter, who is part of a blood cult or something. Uh, and the kid she's babysitting is trying to survive the night <laughs> because they want to kill him to sacrifice him. <laughs> yeah, and so this is the sequel. The people who uh, tried to kill him are back from the dead uh, to try to get a second chance uh, uh, finishing the ritual. And it's cool. It's just it's really just fun, stupid, stupid fun movie. <laughs> hmm. Uh, Enola Holmes, like my sister said, it's uh Millie Bobby Brown. She's great. Go watch it for her. Uh, it's Sherlock stuff. Come on, it's cool. <laughs> uh, Bill and Ted face the music. Mm. That one was great. I never saw the first two. Uh, I just went straight to this one. Neither but... have I. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to, but I was just like, eh, never mind. Uh, but yeah, this is a great, this is a great. <laughs> the King of Staten Island. Ooh, mm. how was that? That one was good, too. Uh, what's his name? Pete Davidson? Yeah, Pete Davidson. He was actually really good in this. Uh, I liked his character, his acting. I don't know if he wrote it or something, but like it was really big. Ba- uh, a lot of it was based on his life. Uh, hmm. And it's just, it's a cool story. Just someone not really having the energy of doing something with their life just because everyone else around him is just doing well <laughs> besides him. And yeah. Uh, Palm Springs. I know Alexis and I, we reviewed that. Uh, Kyle uh, saw it as well and then Peter. So like, yeah, we all were really... Oh, okay. That that I think is at the top, uh, near the top of the list, um, and I think maybe the perfect movie for this year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's it's number four on my list. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really funny. I don't you haven't seen it? Huh? Yes, I did. Oh yeah, okay. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, Kyle, are you a huge Twilight Zone fan? Or just like the OG Twilight Zone, but like I've never like was like a big diehard fan like I am oh, with okay. other properties, but I do like myself some good Twilight Zone. Uh, okay, because I think you might be interested in this one, The Vast of Night. Have you heard of it? Okay, pray tell. Okay, well, all I want to say about it is just that it's just these two teenagers are uh, start hearing a signal on the radio and try to figure out what it where it's coming from. It's a very Twilight Zone uh, type of concept and all that, uh, but it's really interesting. The director, the one who made this, this is like his very first movie. I've heard that he worked on commercials before or something, but like the fact that he was able to do like he did some really cool camera work, the way he, he wrote the script with the dialogue, the actors in it, how they had, it was just like one long dialogue sequence after another. And he, it was a great job, honestly. It's number three on my list. So instead of being like plot driven, it's more dialogue driven. Yeah, it's very dialogue okay. driven. But again, it, the concept, the concept of it, it's it's a very Twilight Zone type of thing. I don't know. I I wasn't sure if you were a Twilight Zone fan, but I mean, either way, I recommend it to everyone. Hmm. Uh, I'll be sure to listen to or watch. Sorry, listen. I'm gonna listen to a movie, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be sure to watch it. Yeah. Uh, onward. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, Invisible Man, my number one. Honestly, Just wow. Super fucking suspenseful movie. Every second of it. Um, I'm really glad I finally got to watch it. Yeah, it, it's something watching a good movie in 2020 is kind of impossible, mm-hmm. honestly. I, and I had this uh, conversation with uh, Peter the other day about this year, and it has been easily the worst year I can ever remember. Not only for a lack of movies in general, but even the ones that did come out this year just weren't very good and they all range from okay kind of bad 
decent, whatever. It's good, but I don't really love it. It's uh, it's a lot of that, and it honestly is a disappointment coming off what I thought you know, was an incredible year in 2019. Uh, with so many great movies. Of course, it's it's really hard to compare this with other years just because of the situation with COVID, right? And with theaters and everything. But looking at what I have, I mean, um, the good that I do have, is some of my favorites, Soul, Palm Springs, The Invisible Man, uh, Borat, Borat 2, uh, which my is wife. hilarious. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Boys State, which was a documentary on a, uh, Apple, uh, produced by A24. Peter and I will be reviewing, reviewing it sometime in the near future. Um, I really liked Hamilton, which was on Disney+. Plus. Um, so that's one of the highlights of the year. Um, I enjoyed uh, Spike Lee's The Five Bloods. Uh, Trial of Chicago 7 was good. Not necessarily great um, by, um, what's his name, Aaron Sorkin. Um, Wonder Woman 1984 was okay to bad to it ranges depending on what oh, where you're watching in the movie it was but it, it was all right it was what it was we'll have a review on that coming up in the, in the next year as well um and yet yeah, it honestly is a whole bunch of like short Disney plus short movies like lamp life and once upon a snowman to music specials like Taylor Swift, Coco, um, it, it, which, you know, can't really be considered movies. There's just, I'm trying to fill this, you know, the space with anything that I've actually seen. Um, there was a Tom Hanks movie that was fucking awful. Uh, Greyhound that came out on uh, Apple. It was beyond <laughs> abysmal, and it would be the worst movie I've seen this year until I saw Mulan, which that took the cake <laughs> uh, of just about a complete waste of time ever. The um, Howard Ashman documentary. That was good. Um, one documentary that was enraging, uh, which I, I shared clips with all of you was from the Skywalker legacy, which was the behind the scenes making of the rise of Skywalker. The rise is, what's that? <laughs> it was the ninth. Oh yeah, that's right. It doesn't exist. Um, no, nah, it, it, it was pretty bleak. There are some movies I am looking forward to and who knows when I'll get to see them. But to be quite honest with you, it, it's, it's just been, I am so hungry for like, a series of good movies. And I told this to, to David, I've just gone back and just rewatched older movies uh, from years past. So like right now I'm, I'm reviewing the year 2017 in film. So I just finished watching Blade Runner 2049 last night and I'll be watching planet of the apes and Coco and other movies because like, I just need something good. That's a movie for a change. Um, and I, and the ones that I liked, I liked, um, but truthfully, there's, there's, I, I've yet to find one that I adore and that's mm -hmm. weird by now there would have been several, you know, it's, it's a whole bunch of like, I like these, but there ain't one that I really love mm -hmm. yet. And that's kind of the issue. Maybe, it, yeah. maybe one of them. Another 24 hours on. left. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, maybe, but... What, one thing that, um, you know, might happen or one thing that we might get out of the pause that we had this year is that many people had times to themselves. So in doing so, maybe we'll get good content from that in the future. <laughs> so... Well, a lot of movies that we were supposed to get this year were, were obviously delayed um, to next year. And I can tell you, one of the ones that um, really, it would be, it would shock me if Warner Brothers were to drop the ball on this DC movie. And that would be James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. I, if, if anything is a sure bet, it should be that, right? Because all of the footage looks amazing yeah. uh, from that movie. 
Alexis is giving me the look like, well, they've done it several times already. Why mm. would we? <laughs> Why should we so trust them? It's sad to me because I, like, I love all of these characters and they just keep. <sighs> the more things change, the more they stay the same. <laughs> um, which, I don't know. It's interesting with, D- with DC movies. Like, they're very divisive. Um, but they're always, I don't know, they're interesting for very different reasons. Every movie is, is, is different that, and, um, so far we're only getting the Suicide Squad. That's the only DC movie next year? What was another one? Mm. Batman? Or is that No, that's, that's the following year. They pushed it to 2022 because they don't want it on HBO Max. They want that to be a the they want that to be a theatrical release. So I mean, I guess that's, that's why good. it's not. <laughs> that's why it's not going to come out. Did you Did you guys hear though that um, Walter Hamada said that they're going to be that there's still going to be a Batman in the quote unquote DC EU. They're going to cast another Batman at the same time they have Robert Pattinson, which exists in their own pocket universe. They're gonna have, we're going to have two Batman in live action sphere at the same time. What do you guys, do you guys have any like ideas like who they would do? Do you even like that idea? Well, okay. Not really. No, number one, it's been done before where they bring in like two iconic um, characters at the same time. Um, and that's playing in theater house, like one theater house next to the other. Um, and that was, here we go again. Here we go again. Are you guys ready? Are you ready for some James Bond history? Um so at the time, uh, Irvin Kirshner, the director of Empire Strikes Back, uh, directed a movie called Never Say Never Again, which is pretty much a blatant ripoff of Thunderball, um, starring one late great Sean Connery in the in the role of James Bond again. Meanwhile, the official in the official canon of James Bond. Um, Roger Moore was playing as James Bond in the movie Octopussy and right coincidentally along against each other Octopussy versus Never Say Never Again was happening so together uh there was two James Bonds happening at the same time so it isn't the first time it's happened where two were uh, a character is kind of in the same vicinity of another. So, um, do I like that idea? Um, if they give me a good story on the DCU part, um, I think that'd be, that'd be phenomenal that, you know, I'll get, I got two Batman movies and, and I'll be, I'll be completely happy. But, um, the way the DCU uh, movie tracks, I, I don't give a shit about that Batman. So I care about what, um, Robert Pattinson is going to be, uh, you know, bringing on the table. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I don't like that idea at all. Especially because like, for us, for us following this story, like it's it sounds it seems messy. Like, it sounds messy, but for people who like don't follow movie movie news like us, they're just gonna be confused like the whole time. You know, there there's two Batman movies coming out at the same time, and they're just gonna go. They're the same. They're playing the same character. It's different timelines, but it's in the same universe. Mm-hmm. I still remember the time when Kyle told me that his stepmom walked into Rogue One thinking that was episode eight. So that's yeah. where we, that's where we're starting. With. Yeah. So Dang. we're okay. So we're okay. Funny story. Ryan, the clock's back to 2016. Uh, we step into the theater house and watch, uh, uh, I'm going to call it theater house from now on until it comes back. So get ready for that. Um, I mean theater museum at this point. Uh, so we were in a theater house, right? And we went to go watch uh, Star Wars Rogue One, and uh, she she was asking me questions. And she was like, "Is that is that supposed to be is that supposed to be the girl from the last one?" And I'm like, "What like, talking about Jen or so, right?" And she was like, "Is that the girl from the last one?" And I'm like, N- a girl from the last oh you mean ray <laughs> and he's like yeah yeah the one with the lightsaber at the end and i'm like yeah that that's this is a different character this takes place way before that and then she saw darth vader and she was even more confused she's like wait a minute i saw him in the other movies why is he all of a sudden here 
<laughs> who are these new characters? <laughs> and so I get it. I get what you mean, uh, David, that it will confuse the general audience. I was mistaken. Uh, that wasn't the only DC thing coming out next year. There is the long-awaited Snyder Cut that I just completely forgot about that's coming out in March <laughs> of Justice League. Are you guys looking forward to that? What do you guys think? I'm interested in it because uh, I'm really curious as to what Snyder's version is. Like The reaction, <laughs> the reaction on Twitter is going to burn everything to the ground. I can already tell you that. Oh, film Twitter is going to die that day and it's going to be <laughs> glorious. It's going to go out in a blaze of glory and honestly, grab your popcorn, you know, load up on guns and bring your friends because this is going to be fucking insane. Um, and yeah, David, I am very interested as well to see the see what the Snyder Cut is. Um, will it be a giant, I mean, but David, you need to understand this. It's so edgy and adult, you know, that's, <laughs> that's what it's going to be, you know, I Alexis. I cannot even tell you, I literally can't remember this movie. <laughs> I only like, saw it once. I, I did too. And I don't know what happens. Like, I completely blocked this movie out of my memory. I don't know what happens. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, that, I think that should say what impression that movie made on us at the time, which was three years, I think, uh, ago at this point. Um, at this well, point, it feels like a decade ago. Yeah. Hmm. Well, like we all said, television was good. So you want, we want to talk about uh, what television we loved in 2020. Who wants to go first? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> the Crown. Okay, yeah. Oh, actually, I haven't finished the fourth season yet. Wow. Yeah, I know. I need to finish that. I need to finish Queen's Gambit and all that. Queen's Gambit, yes. I've only seen the first episode, but damn, that was a good ass episode. <laughs> yeah. Um. I just started watching. Uh, what is it? The Leftovers. It's a uh, cooking competition show. Uh, it just came out today. Uh, people basically they're giving leftovers and they have to make like some fancy dinner with it. Uh, it's really cool. I'm only watching it because I like the comedian uh, who's one of the judges. Uh, he's pretty funny in it. Um... Clone Wars. Oh, yeah. Clone Wars, Clone Wars happened. Yeah. yeah. Um... That was peak, peak uh, quarantine. <laughs> it kind of was. <laughs> uh, it was I'm so... mostly just... Oh, oh go, go on. Ahead. Go on, David. No, you... Uh, well, I was just gonna say, I've mostly just been rewatching shows. I think it was this year that I said I was rewatching Eureka or something. And then, uh, right now I'm rewatching Ben 10 Alien Force. It was a Cartoon huh. Network show, I don't know how long ago. Wow. But it's, it's really fucking good, honestly, though. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> Mm, oh, I uh, I had one in my head and it just went away. <laughs> um, well, it's cool. Uh, it's cool that we finished off the Clone Wars by watching, uh, by watching and recording an episode and reacting to the final, final thing, and just like give it like the pomp and circumstance it needs. You know, I think that was yes. pretty cool. Alexis, sorry, I'm so I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, I, I agree. The um, but I, I have your list of things. Uh, I think it's ten or eleven shows. Um, some of them, most of them, new. Some of them rewatches. Um, some of them ended. So like, Tron Uprising. Uh, this was a show that had one season. It was canceled like so many years ago, but we did it for to the table, Peter and I. And it was actually a really, really good animated television series um, that, man, if they had done it 
in the age of Disney Plus would would have been a hit, but it was in the days when Disney XD was a brand new thing, so it was mm-hmm. it was gonzo. But it's a really good TV show, and honestly, the best anything Tron related. Um, it blows the movies away for me um, in terms of like actually finding an identity uh, of what Tron actually is. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the first uh, time in over a decade where I reacquainted myself and all of us did with, or at least for me anyway, Avatar, the last airbender um, was one of the highlights of this year. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it, it may be honestly even better than I remember it being uh, as powerful as it ever was. And, and it came at like, it came back. At the right yeah. time, also. <laughs> like, like a kin to what happens in the show, you know? Yeah, <laughs> when the world needed the most. <laughs> Literally, though. Uh, and then, go ahead, Kyle. Oh, no, go on. I was going to say, uh, reading off this list here, subsequently, I really love The Legend of Korra. Mm-hmm. I really did. Like, I know that we, we got very critical in season two, uh, yeah. especially if you heard that episode, but... Um, it really picked up for me in three and four uh, it was honestly kind of phenomenal. Uh, the quality of the na- animation, the storytelling and like to me, like legend of Korra works so well as a continuation to airbender. I mean, it, it's its own story, but it's in the same universe, kind of like how rebels was like to the clone wars. Mm-hmm. Uh, it very much fits as a part of a whole. Um, and I am sad that it didn't get the same traction um, as I hoped it would have on Netflix. But um, I don't know. For me, it was definitely a winner. Uh, you just mentioned it. The Crown, baby. Uh, <laughs> I hadn't seen that show in years. And um, I, I experienced seasons two, three, and four back to back. And um, it, it's it's the shit's crazy. Alexis <laughs> and I are going to be doing a recap series uh, in January. Start, hopefully starting in January. Um, for the four seasons, um, and it's it's honestly some of the most entertaining thing you'll ever see. Honestly, it literally keeps you on the edge of your seat. But like, <laughs> also, it's so funny because like nothing is happening, but so much is happening at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's, and, and honestly, especially season four was wow. <laughs> it was great. So that that was that was the first show I mentioned that actually had a new season this year. Uh, this one was an old one, but we had a great time of it, and it was The Haunting of Hill House. Mm-hmm. And, That's of course, really The Haunting of Bly Manor. Which I'm going to be you... honest, I still haven't seen it. <laughs> I was going to ask you, you still got not seen the... Oh, my God. You're not alone. Wow. Man. You're not alone. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. There was one thing that I watched and I got hooked and I watched the whole thing in like a week, which was Lucifer. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, a week? Isn't that like six seasons? Like Yeah. Uh, five. Isn't five? it five? It's five seasons and like the last two are like very short episodes, so but I mean either way. <laughs> She finished it. It's fast. so good. I loved it so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, a weird situation where it was a network show, then it was moved over the Netflix, and it's still, I think, in production and has more episodes on the way. So, mm-hmm. yeah, They're doing that was a, a holiday special and a musical Aren't episode. <laughs> wow, interesting. Maybe I'll take a. Maybe I'll see it. Uh, Doctor Who. Uh, I binge watched all of them on H. That was the only thing I used HBO Max for this year. <laughs> <laughs> was just uh, rewatching uh, all of the seasons of uh, or post two thousand two thousand five and on uh, of new Doctor Who, and um, it's really good, guys. I know it's like campy and cheesy, and a lot of it doesn't make any sense, but it I don't know. It does things to me. I love mm. that show. I really do. Um, this one took me by surprise in terms of how much I actually uh, responded to it, and that was The Good Place. Uh, it's four seasons. We just mentioned it's on Netflix. Michael Shore uh, with um, 
um oh my god with a whole bunch of people i don't remember the names right now um blanking out but we talked about it obviously on red spotlight and it it really did help my mental state (laughs) watching (laughs) this show on top of it being one of the best written shows ever and also one of the more comedic ones as well uh the comedy though that really stole my heart in a big way was schitt's creek and this is like one of the weirdest years for me because i in like the stars kind of align this way like this is like the show that came out of nowhere for me and that just like instantly loved and then it swept at the damn emmys uh like best comedy series actor actress supporting actor and writing directing like i've you know me and my track record with like the things that i love just inevitably (laughs) being like shot in the head on its way to a victory um and this one was just really uh fun to see the people on the show winning and everything but it really was a great comedy series um a very progressive one at that um that featured a strong like lgbt relationship that was um completely absent of any homophobia as it should be and so that's really great thing to see and it's also fucking hilarious Catherine and we're in it (laughs) (laughs) we're in it (laughs) Yeah, David, oh, yeah, David and Alexis, they're literally in it. <laughs> That's right. That's the weirdest thing that didn't occur to me until after the fact that the two, two of the main characters are a brother-sister called David and Alexis. And then on our podcast, we have a brother-sister, David and Alexis. <laughs> I'm also just curious about their relationship. I know, if me it's too. Like... like, that would be the only reason why I would want to watch it. <laughs> It's it's good. It's good. And honestly, mm-hmm. I think like for a comedy series, what I loved about it is that it wasn't like most of the sitcoms where it's like the characters mostly stay the same. There is growth. There are arcs. These people evolve through the through the six seasons, much like you would see in a drama series or, or others. So I, I, I thought it to be very good. And then for me, obviously, the most personal and passionate of ones uh, that like, the weird thing is they both had their last seasons and they both ended with the number seven uh and we both covered them uh extensively with fantasy fair we closed out the clone wars which Mm -hmm. honestly especially the last four episodes i I, that felt like such an event uh and i and it was all of us here watching it together (laughs) what happened that only we participated in (laughs) yeah I, I know it seems like, huh? Um, like, and to me, like this ain't this ain't throwing shade at anybody, but this was like peak Star Wars of two thousand twenty. This was peak Star Wars for two thousand twenty, um, and one of the things that I that that stood with stuck with me was hearing Filoni talk about how he wrote these last four episodes or how he basically finish them or revise them and they really were better i think we we got a better product um a better final version of this than it would have when the when the clone wars originally was going to end or whatever um not just because of the homages or the references but just i think the the filmmaking involved was great like that that last shot is still haunting um and somber and just poetic in so many ways um, to close out this chapter much of can, Star Wars. Much akin like Star Wars itself, because much like Star Wars, it's like poetry, it rhymes. Um, but the thing about Star Wars that, I, you know, all joking aside, that I think that was really incredible about uh, the Clone Wars is that we were down to the wire in the in this, uh, in this arc. Like, we were literally in the thick of Revenge of the Sith that I think was so phenomenal of, like, making it a tie-in with Revenge of the Sith, but also making it a completely different animal all in itself and an extraordinary animal at that. Um, And I think that with the storytelling, I mean, by and large, it it was Rax and Ahsoka's story. Um, And it was nice and fitting that, you know, because we see what happens to Anakin. We see what happens Mm -hmm. to Obi-Wan. If you want to see what happens to them, go watch episode three. Um, Also, I kind of like that the Clone Wars kind of boosts 
the characters a bit in episode three and the prequels and all that stuff and makes the prequel era at least a little bit bearable because you know that it other... makes it watchable yeah because at least other shit is going on you know behind the curtains you know of oz but i think the thing that makes the clone wars so fun you know fascinating is the facets number one the way that maul is developed in the finale like he knew all this shit Mm -hmm. like mentioning that he wants to kill anakin to stop this whole thing from you know coming you know i.e the grinch style (laughs) um but i i think that like and just that plot the fact that ahsoka you know just doesn't want to you know acknowledge the fact that her the person that she knows as like her big brother you know sky guy it will, will turn evil i love i love that whole bit i love the whole um i love the final shot of ahsoka as well of her just holding the lightsaber or just casting that aside you know and i love that you know symbolic imagery i love when uh spoilers for those who haven't seen clone wars by the way sorry um but i love when vader shows up at the end and like instead of showing him as like you know the badass that you know you see in in rogue one i like that you know you see the damaged soul that anakin skywalker is and you get a little bit of that as well and so i think clone wars just like i i think it couldn't have ended any better i think that that right there is like I, I think, like, in, in terms of Clone Wars, you know, as a whole, as a series, I think it works from, you know, from front to back, you know, with without any, like, you know, uh, hesitancies and dips in quality and all that stuff because it does tell, like, the grander story of Star Wars at large and makes it a larger world in that sense. So, beautiful. I thought the finale was beautiful. Yeah, and as I mentioned before, like it, it meant a lot to me because it was definitely something I never thought I'd ever see, and something that I've uh, would have wanted back in 2013 when the show was first canceled, um, and then years later we got it, and it was honestly well worth the wait. I think it was even better because of how much of the anticipation went into it, um, and in a similar way, and something I never thought would actually happen, and that was uh, with Agents of Shield. That got a last season, uh, a seventh season, and it got a send off that I, um, in in and David can tell you like we have had so many conversations this year recapping the the show weekly. Um, we never thought uh, it would actually make it all the way to, to seven seasons because of mm-hmm. every every year it was always like the last show on network television for its fate to be decided. I remember back in 2018, I think um, I was working at the office in DC and Kyle messaged me that finally that ABC renewed it. Oh, at that time it was season six. And then it it, it was a message with Alexis. Can you finally shut up now? <laughs> um, and then I obliged with, yes, I can, can finally rest. Um, uh, and then we got this seventh season and like, uh, a lot of it was uh, another great season of the show, but a lot of what really fueled the passion this year was uh, having someone to actually talk uh, with this to, and that was with David. And so, like, um, by just the, the by the way, David, I I like to thank you for doing the God, you know, God's work by <laughs> um by taking one for the team. I I know I can't. Thank you enough for that, and I and I absolutely love you for that. So thank you. Um, you shall be getting a, a raise pretty soon in your uh, inbox from Red Spotlight Entertainment Network. So keep that. <laughs> no, but he, uh, he can speak for himself. But I'm sure I know he really enjoyed those conversations too, because we not only recapped everything, but we got to do a lot of speculation on a week to week basis. Like to me. Part of the reason why this is my favorite show was it, it was the most uh, rewarding experience watching on a week to week basis. And I think those conversations were proof of that. Um, and it ended in, in such a perfect way. Um, and was just so blessed this year with so many great finales from Clone Wars to Good Place to Shit's Creek to this one especially. And I remember um, at least and, and David, you can speak, obviously we'll we have some shield stuff. Hopefully we can do in 2021 that we, we talked about. But for those that haven't seen the seventh season, like to me, it was, it, it may just be my favorite season of the whole show. It's up there with season four. 
Um, I know I think David still prefers the fourth season, but from an entertainment standpoint, season seven is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and more than what I could have asked for. I think like it honestly reached a new high in, in, in ways that I didn't expect it would. So um, I was so scared that I would be let down and disappointed um, as it got near the end, only because you know how finales have been lately. Um, but I wasn't. And it closed a chapter uh, with this TV show. Um, but... Yeah, it was kind of the weird thing about this year is like it was a lot of closing chapters, a lot of new pages uh, being turned, but ultimately worth, I think, the experience. Uh, I think, David, uh, you definitely would uh, agree with me on that one. It was so much fun getting to do those shows with you. No, oh, yeah, they were great. <laughs> it was just fun uh, making theories again for this show. I remember in past seasons i was always making like all these crazy theories none of them came true but like it was (laughs) (laughs) but yeah Yeah. it was fun yeah so uh, it was a great year in tv i i I honestly feel it wasn't this i think a lot of stuff that i hadn't got to um that i that i uh i do want to get to at some point um and that's kind of what we focused a lot of our uh, programming for Red Spotlight was just do some TV segments on, on, on these shows to keep content flowing because uh, there wasn't any new movies, that's for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, any any other TV shows that we missed that you want to talk about? Any other stuff that uh, you watched? Um, oh, I, The Mandalorian. Kyle, Mandalorian, right? I I watched Mandalorian. Yeah. I, I liked it. Um, I'm going to oh, say something controversial. I, yeah. I think I enjoyed this season more than the first one. You think? I think I enjoyed this more than the first season. Um, Only because of the entertainment that came with the discussions that I had with Alexis and Peter on a weekly basis. Just the <laughs> reactions to some of the stuff that happened. Um, and, and David as well. Um. Look, the thing about the Mandalorian, it's it's a really well made show, and I think that's kind of the reason why I keep watching. It's like it, it it's so great to look at. Um, I think for me, ultimately, among a, a whole bunch of reasons, I don't care all, t- all that much about it. I think that there's something with the tone of the show that I'm not really all the way in for. But I look for what it is. I think they did a reasonably good job, but um. There's there's some things in there that um, I'm surprised has actually sparked a lot of uh, conversation uh, in a more mixed direction than it was previously. Like a lot of the stuff with Boba Fett especially has gotten very mixed. Uh, Either you love it or you hate it. Even Luke um, and his appearance. Oh, spoilers, I guess, for The Mandalorian. Although who didn't know that by now at this point, considering it's like (laughs) the number one show on the planet. Um, and everybody watches it. Um, you know, it is what it is. I watch it every week. Um, I found entertainment value where I could. Um, and I guess we're not going to get that back next year. We're going to get it in 2022 because the, the book of Boba Fett <laughs> we're going to get next year. That made me barf. <laughs> To be honest, <laughs> I, I I was oh just God. holy shit. We don't need this bullshit. <laughs> Boba Fett was just a throwaway character. Why? That was the only aspect of this season that I didn't like. To be honest, I'm like Boba Fett should have been. You know, he should still be in the gut of the Sarlacc pit. What the fuck, people? Um, but. Uh yeah, Mandalorian. Other than that aspect, I absolutely liked the Mandalorian. Um, I really liked the first episode. That's that was my favorite so far. The first yeah. episode was really good. Yeah. Um, I like the episode the um the Believer. I like the Believer episode. That one was actually good too. I think for reminding me, Bill Burr surprised the hell Holy out of me. He didn't know he could actually act. He's he the- surpri- He surprised everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And he, he yeah. this guy is notorious because I knew Bill Burr before going into the Mandalorian and all that stuff. And this guy is notorious for making fun of Star Wars fans <laughs> as well. So it's kind of funny. Um, he's like, you're what? This movie is a, a intergalactic self help book with 
Muppets. <laughs> As he describes Star Wars. And it, it's kind of funny to see him in uh, Star Wars in this capacity. Um, and also, like, he, like, gave, like, the most, like like endearing look to you know on the inside of the you know on you know on the imperial side and i think that was incredible seeing like him discussing like hey you left our men for dead you know kind of thing and he was like oh it's all in the glory of the empire and it was beautiful um best actor of the mandalorian so far uh bar none um that episode was great and honestly like i think it's a nice little bit of uh star wars uh storytelling and you know, just that faction alone. Um, yeah, I like, I, I like, I liked season two. You know, I don't, you know, I just, it, it, it showed me Star Warsy things. It, it got me in the feels with, uh, with Grogu and, uh, and Din Djarin, you know, and it made, you know, it made me, you know, I, I like that. I, I'm afraid that of where season three is going to go because they took that the element that I love about Mandalorian away. <laughs> um, so I don't know where season three is going to go. Um, hopefully we get Grogu back. Hopefully it's just as the the memes uh, suggest. <laughs> I don't know, man. It didn't seem that way. It seemed like that that baby was written off the show for good. But there's some that say that there's no way that the show continues to be as popular without that baby. So I don't know what they do or what they did, but we're not going to know until I think over a year from now. Grogu is Disney's minions. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess, although I prefer baby Groot, if we're being honest. Um, Yeah. Anyway. Oh, um, I watched House for the millionth time, front to back. Um, did you? It's always it's always fun to revisit that show. Um, I got it caught me in the feels in the finale. Um, yeah, like it, it's a bittersweet finale because like it leaves a lot of things open ended. Um, but yet again, it ends the way it begins, sort of thing. And I and I kind of like that kind of thing, full circle. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, so House MD. Check it if you haven't. It's on Prime or Peacock. All right. I want to get a little bit more um, retrospective this year in terms of the, you know, the stuff we've produced, and that's the podcasts. I want to go around and I want to ask Kyle, Alexis, and David um, what you remember most this year or what comes to mind when you think of the podcast in 2020, like some favorite moments. Are you particularly proud of some of the content we covered or how we produced it? Some of your, you know, and before that, and that way you have time to think about this, David, uh, I provided with you mm. actually some mathematical equations. Um, to kind of, uh, you know, remind us of exactly how much work we actually put out this year, David. So if you have it with you, by all means, we are listening intently. Yeah. So last year. Which was last, 2019. Yeah, 2019. We did 60 Red Spotlight episodes, 37 Fantasy Fair episodes, one to the table episode, and 20 audio commentaries which led to 118 episodes in total for 2019. Uh, and then for this year, it was 76 Red Spotlight episodes, 30 Fantasy Fair episodes, 10 To The Table episodes, 5 Bond and Beyond episodes, and 20 audio commentaries. Somehow we got 20 and 20, <laughs> which is really weird. Which makes 2020. Hey. <laughs> which led to 141 podcasts in total for this year and i mean 141 for this episode i guess yeah i included this episode with that so oh, that that's 23 more epi more podcasts recorded in 2020 than uh, compared to 2019 pandemic baby um yeah impressive most impressive 
Uh, does, it, does it feel like we work that much to do this show? <laughs> Mm. No. <laughs> um. Sometimes, but that's just because like it, <laughs> it 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 gets to like the end and stuff like that, where it feels like it's work. Um. But other than that, we're just. Again, I I mentioned it to you in one of the uh, previous podcasts we did um, together on on the main Red Spotlight feed is, you know, I like the idea that one day we could share all of our conversations with with, you know, with the with a significant other or, you know, or, you know, children of our own if we did ever decide that, you know, to go that route. But I like the fact that, you know, we have that the accumulation and conversations and recordings logged and archived somewhere, you know, like, cause I always wonder like, what did my, what did my mom and her friends talk about? What did, what did my dad and his friends talk about? You know? And I love that we get that, that this is a thing that we have, you know, and I, and I love that, you know, our conversations and our friends are on the internet forever you know and i and i love that that we get to do that and put it out there of us just chilling and i think that's honestly incredible that we that we do we have the means of doing that and also um that we just do it in general and we all have like similar interests and we just shoot the shit all the time and it's impressive. It's most impressive. Um, proud moments. I'm proud of um, of all the um, all the content uh, we did on the fantasy fair. Uh, Moreno and I, you know, even though she put up with a lot of my bullshit, um, namely puns and all that stuff. So, Moreno, thank you. You will also be getting a raise. <laughs> <laughs> I got a hat. You got a hat. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, uh, I, I love the Muppet Month. Muppet Month was a blast. I, I love, you know, doing the Halloween, you know, episodes that we did. <laughs> I mean, that it's nothing to sneeze at, obviously. But um, I think that everything it just accumulated into a nice little bow despite this dumpster fire of a fucking year that we had but you know honestly if you know it gave us the time to do that and to talk things out and just riff about disney james bond movies in general uh, uh revisit a movie here and there you know i think that that is what this fucking podcast is about is about doing that stuff and having conversations with with friends and i think that that is all worth it in the end you know uh it may not mean a, a penny to another person i mean it means um a lot to um previous uh previous number one fan but now a frequent corresponder um david mar uh, david moreno and then also sergio uh ramos you know is now taking that mantle and we are all we are all you know <laughs> getting into that stuff and then yes i know i'm rambling but that that's that's just where this year has been you know this is a therapy session i'm 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 in the seat you guys are unfortunately on the on the receiving end of that stuff but here we are rest ball entertainment it, it 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 is uh it's been a long time it's been what five years already five six years and it's still keep on coming and you bet your ass we're gonna keep on doing it until un, until we either die of old age or this whole or uh, this pandemic leads us into the apocalypse. Yay, <laughs> Alexis. Um, same question to you. What comes to your mind uh, about what are you most proud of in terms of the podcast we did, and do you have a favorite one? Um. Well, first of all, I would just like to say that I guess like thank you for you know I mean both of you guys like kind of made this thing happen and if it wasn't for this 
I feel like we would all be going insane right now because <laughs> this is where we <laughs> let all of our <laughs> anger out. <laughs> um, and there was a lot to let out this year. <laughs> um, and I guess I have like three favorites, which is um, everything we did with Avatar um, when we did, fuck, what are the movies called? Um, what did we do? Audio commentaries? <laughs> I'll come back to it. Um. We did audio commentaries? Is that what you yes, mean? For which um, movies? No, not audio commentaries. Uh, oh my god. You mean I, the, like, the, the ranking of the decade? No, no, it was when we talked about two movies in uh, July. We're talking about Ava DuVernay? Yes. So we talked mm. about the 13th documentary and then also... I, damn, I forgot to put this on my list of television that I saw this year, which was When They See Us on yeah. Netflix. Oh my God, I forgot to put that, but you're so right. That, that Wow. Was, that, that, was, was, that was a really good episode. That was a moment of like looking, looking at, you know, humanity with hope with the whole Black Lives Matter thing. Like that was impressive to me. Just how many people rallied up and, you know, took that shit seriously and took that shit to heart, you know, and still keep on taking it to heart, you know, of of how this, you know, year is going. So that's another bonus of humanity. I and honestly, yeah, that, that's something I think, you know, that we needed. We needed mm-hmm. to be, you know grab by the shoulders and be shaken and be like hey like this is what's going on so you know although it caused a lot of I wouldn't say damage but like you know a lot of self reflection and a lot of realization of like holy shit like what we're doing is either bad or not good enough but at the same time it did make us you know think twice about everything and you know kind of make like move forward to be better Mm -hmm. Um, and and you really deserve most credit for that alexis and you you really did spearhead the decision to openly talk about that on the show um and it kind of made us feel better for not having you know to i guess shoehorn it in but you know because of you we really did a whole episode just talking about that movement and why we needed to say our piece, but then also the programming that came afterward, which was with Ava DuVernay and 13th and When They See Us. Um, yeah, like th- that was really a great month and in many ways a testament to uh, just what you wanted to talk about. So the other stuff, then you had your third favorite that you had? And Muppet Month. Muppet Month. That was so much fun. <coughs> you mean? <coughs> oh no! Muppet Month. Muppet Month. Ah! <laughs> I blame you, Alexis. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David. Do you have any favorite recordings of the year that you that you? Before that, uh... he says it, I also really enjoyed that we all kind of collaborated this year with each other and mm-hmm. like we did something that somebody threw out there <laughs> yeah and a lot of it was just kind of like here's an idea and it's like all right let's do it <laughs> and we went ahead and did it <laughs> yeah and it usually came out pretty good i mm-hmm. think so yeah Dave. <laughs> uh honestly i think my favorite thing might have been legend of Korra. Uh, really okay i just it got that show got so much hate when it came out and i feel like a lot of people got so many things wrong with that show <laughs> it's just by saying like oh it broke the lore it uh the characters were dumb or something like that and i'm just like y'all are being weird <laughs> you know <laughs> And so I just kind of, I was just kind of happy that some of us got to talk about some love about the show. And hopefully if some people were listening, (laughs) uh, they maybe got a different view of it or something. I don't know. 
You know, it's so funny how like a lot of the cr- uh, comic criticisms that Legend of Korra got is the same uh, criticism that The Last Jedi received. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of funny how like that kind of, you know, the same people are always the loudest. <laughs> yeah. It's the exact same really. people. Yeah. Well, to me, uh, I, I, the thing that I'm most proud, and I, th- I think you were right, Alexis, what you said um, about uh, collaborating more than we ever had before because we really had to think outside the box just a bit on like stuff to talk about this year because we were primarily a movie podcast and what do we do in a year with no movies right um but the transition was almost honestly seamless we just jumped into it with uh just tackling whatever idea came to us on across all of the different podcasts and the collaboration was just more present than ever before. Um, Peter and I rebooted to the table and we've had a blast doing it. Um, You've come, Alexis has come back full time on red spotlight. And this was like the first time she's been on, on the show on a regular basis in years and contributed so many wonderful ideas that um, came to fruition from, you know, the Ava DuVernay material to the Avatar stuff, which what we're doing now or in the future with The Crown. Um, it, it's honestly great from Kyle and I having more off the cuff uh, conversational type podcasts than uh, ever before. Uh, also with David. Uh, with the audio commentaries that you and I have done, uh, as well as the shield recaps have meant a lot to me. I know one of the favorite recordings that you and I had was with uh, the end of the spider verse audio commentary, where Mm. I think Peter told me, man, I never, I never heard David get emotional before. Um, And (laughs) and that was at that, that commentary for into the spider verse. Um, So, and, 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 the, the period when the pandemic first hit was some of the most exciting stuff because we, we just like, all right, what, what, what can we do uh, to just get as much stuff out there? So with fantasy fair, we did the Pixar list finally, or we ranked the Disney princess movies. We ranked our favorite Disneyland attractions. And those are some of like my favorite, uh, our favorite Disney songs. Um, that's all on there for you to listen on red spotlight. We, we did, I uh, think, two episodes on our favorite films of the 2010s uh decade um we even did i think a series uh we did a four-part series uh that peter thought up of of talking about you know the movies that made um some of the biggest impressions on us as kids yeah and it, it it Definitely went places I didn't expect, like the horror movie Santa Claus that you guys watched, <laughs> um, to finding out my, I guess, obsession with aliens. Um, and 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 Peter likes, he says he just wants a Turbo Man, man. Um, so like a whole bunch of stuff that came through that that was um, so entertaining. Uh and yeah, uh, by the way, I like to put on record um, once in a while. I do have nightmares of the visions that I've seen in the in the Santa Claus uh, uh, movie that Moreno had me watch. So um, thank you, Moreno, once again. For that. <laughs> Nightmare fuel. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Right. And uh, the audio commentaries, a lot of those were fun too. Like, um, even though it was crapping on it, but the rise of Skywalker, um, and knives out, especially, I know I really enjoyed, um, with the Moranos we did what we did last Jedi infinity war and Endgame, And that was really fun. Alexis. I really loved their conversation on both, uh, monsters university and the little mermaid. Uh, those were, yeah, uh, I feel like that was like, because sometimes I feel like when we do audio commentaries, we do run out of things to say, but I feel like those two were like, we just talked like nonstop. Oh, yeah. 
I remember listening to the Little Mermaid one, and I was li- I literally went, "Wait, it's over! Like you guys are already at the end! <laughs> like you just kept going and going!" And I was, yeah, it was great. I mean, and uh, apparently because we do so many of them a year, it, it, it's hard to keep like finding things to talk about as you know for the length of the movie. Uh, and, and, and admittedly, it's hard to also have the movie in front of you and not just watch it. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, especially one but, that you yeah. love. Yeah, when a lot of these, most of these, um, are movies that we love. Uh, but we are able to, and, and yeah, so like, we've had so, I think, in my view, we have had the best conversations we've ever had. We've, we've produced the best work we've ever done this year. I, I literally am proud of all of it. And from a creative standpoint, uh, that's, you know, that's fueled me. And then also from, um, coping with a pandemic standpoint, it's been essential to have this communication that we're having with each other is like the most human contact, at least I've been able to have, uh, because of the situation that we are in. And so I think all of you for, um, wanting to do this uh what what was it david 141 podcasts in total yeah <laughs> damn <laughs> like and i, I want to say that's a record right um I, I, it has to be the most i think work we've ever done that's a lot uh, of talking that's a lot of talking that's right um so yeah as we, you know, bring this final installment of 2020 to a close, uh, would you guys like to get a little bit more personal here and share some uh, details about your lives that was 2020? Like notable events that happened in your lives. Um Again, only if you wish to discuss. Peter's only notable event was that he got COVID-19. So we got one out of the way. (laughs) Wow. Um, I mean, I think one tragedy that we all Mm. got. (laughs) Don't open that old wound. Don't open it. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. (laughs) But that's the only one that we all share. Yeah. Well, okay. Go so, ahead, Alexis. Go ahead. Oh my God. Yeah. Moreno. Uh, we. I mean, we've talked about this so many times, but <laughs> you know, we have been friends for five years, and literally the first which we day celebrated that this we year. All hung out. Yes. It was all about Disney. Like that was our first conversation, and. It was uh, going to Disney has always been just something that I've wanted to do with you guys, and it was going to happen this year. <laughs> uh, but you know, it didn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was fun. And we had, you know, we, we thought of like the whole intricacies of the plan. We were like, okay, what are we going to take? You know, what, what vehicle are we going to go in? You know, hotel arrangements. And we're already, you know, you know, we already had that configured down to, you know, a science. It was just a matter of doing it and we never got to do it. So I think like we had the tickets, we had the tickets reserved too. I mean, courtesy uh, of our friend Alexis here, but we had the tickets. We got all of that stuff. I don't know locked what else was loaded. That gun was locked and loaded, ready. That trigger was ready to be pulled. But unfortunately, like uh, uh, 2020 took that freaking shotgun and just broke it over its knee. And we're like, no, no. And... 2020 took that and shot us in the face. Like, huh? You thought literally that's how I felt like. I mean, we were so close to it. Like you could taste it. Oh my god! And this is the first, like, guys. We don't get out often. This was like our we once really like don't. this was like our, our one thing that we yeah. had that that we had, and it, it and it was like also like it kind of sucked because um it was like because the 
original plan was that me and David were going to go. And we were going to go to Disneyland. We were going to go to Universal Studios. Like, we were going to go do... Like, we were going to go visit family. And it was just something that me and him were going to do. So, it was going to be, like, our first... I mean, it was going to be to San Diego and stuff. So, it wasn't, like, a big... You know, like, some more fancy. But, like, it was just something that we both planned. Like, we got vacation days for. And then, you know, we decided to, you know, go big or go home. (laughs) (laughs) And we came home. (laughs) (laughs) I remember um, deep in the conversation where we went to to Onward, went to go see Onward, and we had uh, had dinner with, uh, with Peter and his girlfriend Lexi. And I remember she said that she was planning on going to Egypt. Dude, that fucking sucks. Not only that, like the Disney were, cruise, they were going yeah, to go on a fucking they were cruise, go to Disney, and they were also going to be joining us on the Disneyland trips. So, like all yeah. of that, they were planning on doing. <laughs> That's so <laughs> sad. Like, <laughs> oh, man. like Egypt. That's so I know. freaking like it, it's gorgeously rich in history. Like just going there is. Absolutely, she can stunning. see Egypt if she sees Wonder Woman on HBO Max. <laughs> no, and That's... a lot of people are pissed off about that. So, <laughs> oh god, oh, I don't, no. I don't even want to ask. You know, honestly, with Wonder Woman eighty four, I've been tiptoeing around that movie because I just went like, <gasps> it's a eh. landmine. Maybe if I step around it, maybe it won't <laughs> notice my, you know, my presence. You know, <laughs> um. But That's yeah. the least. What I'd mentioned was the least problematic aspect of the movie. Apparently, there's rape involved too, and some other things too with that, that movie. That's <sighs> this interesting. Movie is just okay. Anyways, let's, yeah, let's get away from Wonder Woman eighty um, four, shall we? <laughs> but I mean, but, it's, yeah, I mean, I guess like something that we can take out of the, that situation is just we we will go one day where. We don't know when, but we will, and maybe we'll go to Disney World instead. <laughs> uh, not right now, obviously. Uh, or we can do both. I, can do I have no idea. Por que no los dos? Um, as they say, why not both of them? Um, and and I, 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 I want to go to Disney World, but I also want to go to Disneyland, and we need to get Kyle's ass back in Disneyland because he hasn't yes. been since the dawn of time. Um, <laughs> this, I am fucking starving. You have no idea. Like, I, you guys didn't see it. I had a breakdown when I found out that we were not going to have it off, you know, we off camera. We all did. <laughs> we all did. What are you talking about? I, but like, you, we're you, still not over it. <laughs> you were there recently, Moreno. You frequent it. I haven't been in almost a decade, and for that to be, you know, taken away from me, I just, like, like, I could almost vomit from, you know, from that not surprise of, you know, something not happening, you know, according to plan in good Red Spala entertainment fashion, or or among us, um, it, ju- it just sucks. It, it really does suck, and this year, like, took a blow and honestly it it just it's shit it's just a table of shit and i don't like it uh it, this mo this year it could go to hell um for all i care um but personally how has your life been like this year any notable moments and improvements from the year before um, i think alexis yeah. had a lot of stuff that she went through no improvements. <laughs> well, I guess maybe. Um, but I don't know if it's going to be like weird to say given people's situation right now. But I am finally like somewhat financially stable. So that makes me happy because I've never like I don't know how to save money. Whenever I get my check, I just spend it. Uh, but I'm able to save money now, so I am proud of that. Uh, but everything else, it fucking sucks. Like, (laughs) 
it is it was one of those years i guess or those situations where you you finally like have a goal you have a plan you you know you like see the end of like what you're working for and it all just was like taken away <laughs> um and i mean i got some of it back but like those four months that we were in lockdown like it's going to take years for me to get that back you really so... hit rock bottom then didn't you <laughs> so yeah i mean it's good that I got it back, but it sucks to, like, there are good days and there are bad days. Like, I'm very grateful that I did get it back, um, and I'm happy that I'm there, but, like, there are moments where I just kind of think, like, fuck, like, I would have been learning and doing a lot more if, like, none of this had happened. And I'm literally starting from the bottom again. <laughs> David? Um, yeah, no improvements. But besides this one thing that happened, nothing uh, really got worse for me or bad. Uh, I mean, you almost <laughs> died, didn't you? Yeah. I'm like, I, that's, that's, that's what I said, except for this one thing. Nothing um, really got worse or bad for me. That's what I'm saying. Uh, school was definitely like the biggest change and it sucked because this, before... that, the, this is kind of like I mean it's not there are a lot of things that happened to me but like if you know David like he, this is like like breaks my heart for him because um, he he talks to you guys he talks to people but it's really hard for him to like put himself out there and uh for this like the beginning of the year he was really trying and then all of that just got taken away from him too <laughs> yeah so i was taking a documentary class in the beginning of the year and uh one of my classmates you know she had an idea and i was just kind of like oh this let's make something out of this like let's see what we can do and we only got one interview in uh, I, I bought some fucking new equipment for like a new lens no, lights and shit no no yeah, I mean I don't regret it I'm I'm gonna use it someday well yeah you, eventually. yeah I mean not that but just like it was the beginning of something yeah. special and yeah. then yeah it's just and a reminder of just like how this stupid thing upended all of our lives mm -hmm. and then it just it really sucked out the motivation for me on that semester. I just, I literally stopped going to the classes <laughs> online. I mean, luckily though, I got some really cool teachers and they still passed me. <laughs> so like, that's what I'm saying. Like nothing really like bad that much happened to me. And then, yeah, I got in a car crash. <laughs> uh, people, if, if you have your turn signal on, go for it. Don't fucking... <laughs> fuck with us <laughs> uh but yeah my car got totaled yell it out for those that are uh deaf in the back <laughs> yes for sure that's what I'm the that's the only thing i'm worried about now it's just like i'm if i see someone He's like traumatized <laughs> <can> I, uh, <laughs> uh, but like if i see someone coming like on the road and i'm on stop sign i'm not gonna go until i see them turn or or anything i don't care if the person behind me honks fucking wait uh but yeah it was it was kind of rough just having to borrow my dad's car again and then another semester of school happened and you know we just we try to make the the, the teachers for sure like i i really enjoyed my teachers trying to make the most of our situation doing online classes and everything uh but it was still pretty fun we i still got to learn a bit um Teachers, but, woo! Yes, yeah. you're April yeah. teachers. Oh my gosh! Absolutely. I know. They, I know for sure. If they're anything like my teachers, they hate. They hate the situation. But you know, you just gotta work with what they got. Uh, but 
luckily, luckily right now, I mean, I, I bought a new car. I'm good. I'm going to be way more fucking careful with it. Sucks is that I got to pay insurance. It's going to cost more because of what happened. You're an adult now, <laughs> David. <laughs> yeah. Adulting sucks. Um, but I mean, like I said, I told, I said this on the last podcast. I'm, what I'm really proud of was that I got to consume more books. Uh, I literally saw an email right now that I got 29 titles this year with over 280 hours of like, Holy listening. shit. Wow. Yeah. So I was, again, I'm really proud of it. <laughs> and I just keep getting more books <laughs> more than I'm reading. Check yeah. out the brains on Brad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was, I mean, there was a lot more lows and really low lows. Mm-hmm. Um, January was just mm. the fuck was wrong with January. Um, I mean, every something happened every month, but like, <laughs> I think Ju- January and July were like the hardest. But I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, I guess you know, my family's in a better place now, so. That's good. That's good news. That's something good to hold on to in a in a year where so much crap has happened. And and that you can definitely say is an improvement. And I, I know I speak on behalf of, of, you know, both Kyle and I when, you know, I say that you, Alexis, are such an inspiration because you you've honestly been hauling so much ass more than Honestly, I I don't think I could handle like you you at this moment in the in the midst of this pandemic in the midst of this holiday season you're you're pulling two uh really uh demanding jobs as well as you've also gone back to school and juggling all of that but also making time to be on this show uh, you know doing these podcasts Honestly, you 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 have nothing but to be proud of yourself for what you've done this year. Honestly, remind yourself of that. I don't think there, I don't think most of the people that I know, and myself included, would put up with the things that you have this year and come out at the other end of it, still being you and still in one piece. So be proud of that. Be happy about that. In a year where there's very little to um be happy about so that um you can say is some good news there kyle moreno i don't think that uh you know i could um and that's just down to the fact that i'm fucking lazy as shit um but i don't think i'll ever have the you know have the you know the balls and grit that you have because like holy shit like two jobs um one from what you tell me is a nightmare story and another one is a nightmare story but all in a different reason um and plus going to school all in the same time like girl you're a fucking rock star you know don't... just the going to school by itself like uh kyle's That's... taking time off i've i've finished school but both of you guys like doing school in this time in this economy <laughs> but yeah but like also but like the, the main thing is like distance learning virtual learning online i took only like two online classes in my entire college career and i hated them and you're doing yeah. that full time it sucks because like i was gonna start doing because i started off doing online mm-hmm. and i've gotten to the point where like i need to take in-person classes because i'm stupid and so that just got to get away from me too so it's it's hard but We'll see. I'm figuring it out as I go. <laughs> we should also mention, uh, we don't talk about this, but we will in this instance. There was one other job you had this year that damn right almost killed you. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. You were oh, um, serving at the will and behest of uh, one Mr. Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst thing ever. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh god! They yelled at you for sitting down. <laughs> Ain't that fucking shit? Like that's the epitome of like 
like late stage capitalism at its finest, you know, working, you know, against you. And it's just, I don't know. Like after hearing that, like I was just like, what the fuck? Like, did she, did she say that, see the face of Satan as well? I mean, like, cause you literally went through hell and back, you know, with the doing that shit. And for those who are working in the warehouses, you know, rest be with you but like this shit is like no 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 <laughs> a thousand percent no um but yeah moreno i want to say that i'm fucking proud of you you are uh you are a, a, a kick-ass you know force to be reckoned with um and not only that but finding time to do podcasts as well so um in terms of this year you're you're truly the mvp of the year just just for that sheer fact alone and honestly, like, uh, and I'm saying this on behalf of me and Alexis, I'm, I'm saying that, you know, uh, good work. <laughs> um, where's my, where's my gold sticker? Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, seriously, I think you're, I think you're, you're, you're doing fantastic girl, girl, or oh God. <laughs> Or, uh, or as like we like to call it, bring it back, the girl. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but um, all serious, all seriousness, um, I'm I'm fucking proud of you, Moreno. Um, uh, and you know, yeah, we need more stories like that. Is you know, you're like a phoenix, you know, rising from the depths of the ashes of you know a horrible year and your you your are. life this year was the most rise and fall story i i like honestly in a, in a 12 month period um <laughs> it, it 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 was kind of really um all over the place um and it for sure won't be a year you will f- soon forget <laughs> no <laughs> and all the different things um Kyle what about you well um you said you started therapy this year right yeah, it isn't as rocky or um or as uh, strenuous as uh, as Moreno's here. Um, it's not a competition. It's okay. <laughs> Just but, tell us, trust me. <laughs> but I'm, I'm a co- glad. <laughs> a few things. Um, number one, I'm going to therapy. I I can finally afford therapy. You know, after you know having having a job and all that stuff. Now I could finally afford. You know, to you know self care that I wasn't able to do prior and honestly like it's been helping I mean it's been you know touch and go a little bit of this year but that's just because of the sheer anxiety that this year has built up um and coronavirus and the people and the sheer stupidity of people just like it, it drives my insanity and depression up the wall um and like it's it's one of those years where a good Disney trip would satisfy it. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to therapy again. I'm I'm doing that. I'm on medication, um, as as you heard me taking earlier. <laughs> um, I'm I'm taking medication now, and I'm 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 looking into getting myself better. Um, I'm actually shopping for schools right now um good uh, good to go for back you in, yeah to go back into um right now i'm being trained to be manager at my job um, congratulations man Congra- look honestly like you you deserve it you really do i i know that 2019 was i think a real low moment for you and i won't get into the reasons why but in in just about every way you've been able to turn that around and i think you, you that and, and I know you have unfortunately um, been absent for some of the stuff we've done this year on podcasts uh-huh. because of how demanding your job is. But I think you are. Beyond, I mean, it's, uh, let's yeah. be fair. It's not Amazon demanding. <laughs> oh no, no, it, it's not a, it's not a, a damn they slave. They let you sit down. Plantation. It's not that. But um, it, it is a very popular location in our community. Uh, and seems to have gotten even more popular because of the pandemic. But the work that you've been doing this year has been hard and laborious and be happy in the fact that you did that well enough to you're at the point where you are right now. Um, if that's what it means being an essential worker, this ain't bruh. <laughs> 
Um, well, so is David. He's an essential worker too. If, David, I mean, if we're still yeah. using David. those terms, essential yeah. Workers. Mm-hmm. I I raise I raise my my coffee cup to you. Um, <laughs> thing that I want to point out about this year that um I think is like really really um really important is that you know I've been tra- more transparent you know and I've been because like I've not been the most transparent person um ever um uh going to my my history i'm quite a bit of a pathological liar um i i tend to weasel my way out of things i hide when you know when you know, you know the tough you know gets tough and i'm i'm starting to be more transparent now i'm i'm more open to things now um i'm more able to to let myself out there and not let my my anxieties dictate that so i'm really uh i i so it's a work in progress still but i'm i'm trying to do that like i mean like i i've told mom things that i've done you know in my past that you know i i no son or daughter or anybody would be comfortable saying to their mother, but that's the broader process of being transparent and transparency is an important part of, uh, of, uh, of human interaction. Um, it like this year uh, has been mentally, even though I've been seeking medical help and all that, it, it has been mentally draining on me. Like there are some, some instances where I feel like just like giving up because like just of my lack of faith in humanity. Um, and it, and it's been tough. It's been really tough this year. Um, but here I am, you know, I'm able to come to you guys and, and talk about Muppets and their capers and shit like that. Um, uh, I, I, you know, this year we found out that sometimes you shouldn't look under the bed. Um, I, I found out that this year that, um, that sometimes, uh, nobody knows what they're doing and that that's fine. I learned that, um, that people of skin color, you know, that that shit matters. Um, I learned this year that, um that at least half of the country is ready for for some prominent change um good change to happen which is also another good thing um and the other I, half is I not. also <laughs> learned that um things are things are good you know and that you know someday we'll find it you know the rainbow connection the lovers the dreamers and me and i think that that is all in all, um, some of the best things, and it, 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 you know, those kind of things fill in the gaps for me of where like this year could have been other, other, another rocky mess. But um, due to the little successes like that, it just helps it in the end. I feel. Well, it's very good to hear. It's very good to hear. Um, and uh, I know that you've. Uh, in in recent years you've you've been more uh transparent about your struggles uh with clinical depression and anxiety and um that it is a battle that is an everyday battle and for the term for the time being um we are very happy to hear the progress is being made and overall the quality of life is in a better place than what it used to be and i mean that's about as much as we can ask for in a year where so much life has been lost and it yeah it's uh yes kyle did you want to no go on go on okay okay um well sorry um, listeners, something Kyle did on the screen is giving me cause for alarm, but I will tread carefully um, <laughs> because I, I just, um, it seems that he got an idea that is going to be the death of me. Anyway, um, oh God, where do I start um, with uh, talking about 
me, and I hope we we can do that, unless there's something you want to get to first, Kyle, because you have a look on your face. (laughs) No, continue. (laughs) God, there's some really worried looks um, (laughs) now at this point, but... um, (laughs) 2020 has been a tumultuous time. And for me, a lot of things have changed and a lot of them have stayed the same. But, uh, I, 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 you know, I, I wanted to write, put on paper, like all the things that like happened this year, like me personally, and that affected me also emotionally and psychologically. And I'm known as the note and paper person of this group. Like I really just write, I, I always have like these notes ready on my notepad, you know, for these shows that creepy. we do on Red Spotlight. What, what was it? It's kind of creepy. <laughs> okay. I okay, like writing notes, but I wrote down um, some of the stuff that came to mind um, last night about what I'm going to remember about this year. And some are good and some are not so good. Um, some of this will be stuff about my personal life that I will be talking about for the first time ever on here. But um, just to show you the kind of year that I've had, but ultimately I, um, um, I think at the end of it and I'll get to the end of it at this point um, in some ways I am uh, better than I was at the beginning of the year. Uh, in the weirdest of circumstances, because you just wouldn't expect it in this of all years. So the first thing that I wrote down was, um, and I'll just read off what I wrote here, right? I started my job, <laughs> my first quote unquote real job um, as a substitute teacher. And um, it, it it brought a sense of purpose and meaning, fulfillment and enjoyment in my life that I hadn't had previously. Um, it was short lived and you'll see right now, but that's kind of where, um, we started the year with me. Um, the other thing, um, I'll just, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and re- read this off. Cause I don't want to like, you know, have transitions here, but if you know who I am, you'll know why these things upset me or made me happy okay so you know remember bernie right so um bernie won iowa he won new hampshire and he won nevada and i think he was like just about one of the only people to ever win the first three contests um and at the time i was on peter and i both were on such a high uh on that that it, it, it was so Good. And then, of course, it didn't come to fruition. And uh, the Democratic Party, led by Barack Obama, successfully united together to deliver South Carolina for Joe Biden and subsequently blocking Bernie Sanders from winning the Democratic nomination. So that happened this year. Um, And as Kyle can tell you, it absolutely crushed my soul when that happened. I think, Kyle, you were present to a shouting match between me and, and Peter on the car ride back from Invisible Man. Yes, a very pleasant car ride indeed. <laughs> I think you said you wanted to, like, open the door and, like, jump, jump out. out. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it, it was probably the most angry I've been ever in my life. Um, and yeah. Anyway, I was only able to experience just two theatrical experiences with my friends this year, and that was The Invisible Man and Onward. Just incredible, just to believe I've only went to the theaters twice in the entire year. Alexis? Oh, you went twice. I went to go watch Birds of Prey. Oh. Just kidding. (laughs) Um... My short-lived start as a substitute teacher um, was abruptly halted along with the rest of our lives by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, This one was fun. Parasite won Best Picture uh, at the Academy Awards, which in all honesty was the happiest I'd ever been at a Best Picture winner. Um, Peter and I, as I mentioned before, rebooted to the table 
uh, and we both were very happy with the final results. I mentioned before that Alexis came back to Red Spotlight, and and I, I wrote this down because it really meant sparked some of the most invigorating, controversial, and emotional conversations on the show we've ever had. I think Alexis broke down several times. Great content. Go listen to it here on the Red Spotlight feed. Um, this one was, uh, well, you'll see. I was encouraged by my, uh, I want to call her my friend, but she was the uh, subject of my short form documentary I made in 2019, Judy Go Wong. Uh, She encouraged me to submit the film that she was a part of to the Nova Film Festival, and I did it. Um, And I was happy to do it. Uh, However, the film was not selected for final consideration. For that, but I did it, and I didn't think I'd actually ever do something like that. So there was that. That's cool. I finally got the chance to work on a campaign where I uh, had actual influence, um, where I got to decide the direction of our communications, the policies that we were writing, uh, and the editing, the firsthand editing of the campaign advertising. It's an experience I'll forever be thankful for. And it ended uh, with us losing to a Nazi. So that's 2020 for you. (laughs) Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, In May, uh, I made the decision. This may seem small, but it was pretty big for me. I made the decision to quit soda after years and years of overindulging. In June... I began to take nighttime walks and I started to, I, I do that several nights a week now. Um, it, it started because I was so fucking bored of being inside the house, but it actually became a really great way to just, you know, get some peace and reduce some stress. Um, for the first time in my life, and some of you have seen this on my Instagram account, I made tamales with my family. Ooh. 25 years old and I finally learned how to make them. Um, and honestly, I was very proud of how they turned out. Uh, the results were quite delicious. I was just like, wow, it, I've never made something before, like cooked something like that. And for the result to be so good, uh, that felt good um, that I, that I got to do that. And then this one, of course, this was just like a moment of euphoria from all of us. Like after a year of near fatal anxiety, Donald Trump is finally defeated and is on his way out of the white house resulting in a real life return of the Jedi moment where you have people literally out in the streets celebrating in a way that (laughs) that 2020 you'd think it just wouldn't happen this year. But and that was yeah, yeah. And instead of yub nub, it was a uh, wet ass uh... <laughs> pussy by Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> that 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 was a hit this year. Apparently, I don't listen to music anymore. Um, although I did listen to Miley Cyrus's Plastic Hearts, which I really liked. Go listen to that one. Um. And because of the situation, of course, I'm on, for the first time in my life, I'm on unemployment benefits. Um, I still have gotten a lot of rejection. I just actually got a rejection uh, notice from a job application and the recording of this podcast. So nothing's really changed there. Um, but I am uh, determined to go back um, to, um, at the very least, resume my work as a sub um, in the near future. I'm currently studying to pass uh, the exam that I need to finally just be like officially certified and do that as a full-time job if I so see fit. So I'm going to do it. Um, and the the big part about that is I need to relearn math. And so that's like one of Which, the, that's oh. going to be like one of the <laughs> biggest challenges in my life, just doing that. Okay. You know? So... Alexis, so two plus two equals what? He couldn't get that earlier. <laughs> I couldn't get that earlier. There was some stuff that I fucked up. And I was like, what? Two plus two? Not that. There was some 
edition that I messed up. <laughs> I got okay, it. so you carry the one. <laughs> yeah, and it's they fine. It's and they fine. let me teach. We... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um. Yeah, Kyle, Peter, and I had a careful background hangout in September to watch a shitty Mulan movie. But there was pizza <laughs> and there was wings. So there was that. And it was humid as fuck. In 2020, I took a deep dive in the filmographies of Steven Spielberg. I finally watched oh, all of his Oh, that's not where I thought I was going to go. <laughs> I finally watched all of his movies, um, and then also Guillermo del Toro. Damn, what did... You, never mind. Um, I was happy to see progressives like Cory Bush, Jamal Bowman, and Ed Markey emerge victorious against their neoliberal um, counterparts. Um, as I've said this already, along with David, Alexis, Kyle, and Peter, we have genuinely produced some of the best material we've ever done from a standpoint this year on the podcast. Uh, this one's hard. Because um, it's been a struggle for me, I, I will say. Uh, in November, this is regarding my health. In November, I realized that um, years of not taking care of my health had caught up with me, and that I was diagnosed with gastritis. And if you're someone like me who loves to eat, it has been just the worst. I, uh, and I said here, which quite frankly has been a bitch because my diet had to change entirely overnight and giving up things like coffee and spicy foods, um, sugary sweets and much, much more. But as a result of the change in my diet with increased exercise, um, because of this condition that I do have and have had, for the last two months, I have lost, and this is an accomplishment. This is actually, I can say it's an accomplishment that I never thought I'd actually be able to do. I've lost 35 pounds and counting. And I feel better than I ever have in my life. Like God, who would have ever like thought that? Like this is somebody like I've overindulged myself my entire life with food. And I never once entertain the idea that if I just gave it up a little bit and lost some weight that I would feel better but I actually do and it was hard for me for a lot of years because I would be living on my own and I had no access to quality foods um like healthy quality foods and I would always eat out at places like Chipotle and Starbucks and Chick-fil-a and you know just a whole bunch of crap that isn't good for you so um being able to um fit in clothes i hadn't in over five six years um being able to be down a size has been an incredible boost for my just self-esteem the fact that everywhere i go and run into people in public when I am out in public and they always comment that like, well, you look good. What did you do? Like the fact that it's noticeable, that's just not something I'm used to. And that's not something I ever thought I'd be able to do. And so you got to take your wins somewhere. And so I feel a, a tremendous amount of, uh, uh, accomplishment in that in a year where, um, and I don't think honestly I would, um, the, the pandemic helped a lot. I mean, yeah, it was the gastritis <laughs> um, diagnosis at the end of the year, but for most of the year, it was it was that that I don't think I would even have bothered to care if it weren't for the fact that I was indoors. Um, in the beginning of the pandemic, I was like, cr I mean, honestly, eating so much crap because I was bored and you know the kind of stuff that yeah. because there's nothing to do. Yeah, like. <laughs> so, yeah, it 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 has been. Yeah, and uh, the more the global pandemic um, has raged on throughout the year, and this is the last thing I will say. I learned this is the thing I I learned to just appreciate, value, and love all of the people in my life 
my friends, my family, and just even just the aspects of normal, boring, mundane life. Just, I learned to appreciate that in every moment of it because we never know how much we've got left. And real life happens in the everyday moments where you think nothing of note happens. But this, what we have right now, this is life. This is our existence. And I'm so grateful that we get to be alive. And I think that's my favorite thing is that um, we've made it out the other end of 2020. Fingers crossed. Um, When the New Year's uh, fireworks (laughs) happen um, in one piece. So it, like any year, there are a lot of things that happen around us and there are situations that force us to change in small and some other significant ways. But I think we can all agree it's been a year. (laughs) And that may be like the understatement of like the century. Um, Well, thank you all so much for listening to us here at Red Spotlight in 2020. On behalf of all of us here, Alexis Moreno, David Francisco, Peter Martinez, Kyle Lara, and myself, just once again, thank you. Reminder, you can listen to our podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts, Apple, Spotify, CastBox.fm. Stay under our spotlight into 2021. Good night. You got anything else left to say, guys, um, that hasn't uh, been said so far? Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. You know, we got to take the small wins, however small. Um, you know, a lot of changes this year. Good, some iffy. <laughs> questionable baby uh, but I don't know I feel like um, I think the thing that like helps me is that like I wasn't the only one going through shit like literally everybody Apparently. was going through something yeah Um, as most years but you know feel like this year we were forced to pay attention to one another yeah and uh which is also not a bad thing because um you kind of have to it made us look around and be like or say you know we gotta stop sometimes and look at the people around us the world around us and we also have to you know give them some love (laughs) Well, funny you should say that. (laughs) (laughs) Why are there so many songs about rainbows and what's on the other side rainbows are visions but only illusions and rainbows have nothing to hide Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. (laughs) Whoops. (laughs) Who said that every wish must be heard and answered when wished on a morning star? Somebody thought of that and someone believed it and look what it's done so far what's so amazing that keeps us stargazing and what do you think we might see 
Someday we'll find it. The rainbow connection. The lovers, the dreamers, and me. All of us under its spell. We know that it's probably magic. You've been half asleep, and have you heard voices? I heard it calling my name. Is this the sweet sound that calls the young sailors? Its voice might be one and the same. I've heard it too many times to ignore it. What do of what we're supposed to be. Cause what is it guys? Someday we'll find it. The rainbow connection. The lovers, the dreamers, and me. La da da dee da da do. La da 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 dee da da do. Stay under the spotlight, everyone.